Hello and welcome to Edge of Empire, a Horus Heresy podcast, would you believe? And joining me this evening, two of the finest chaps a gentleman could aspire to be, the uh, the un- un- unenviable Michael Bottrell. Hello! And the, the, in- on, uh, the indisputable. Unenviable. <laughs> yeah. unenviable. I, I don't and, I and don't know the, if it's an insult or what. I'm just yeah. Oh, that's, I that's, think that's that's, ba- that's not even a backhanded compliment. That's just <laughs> it's the indisputable Christopher Mills. Indisputable. Squire. That's, that's very true. It yes, is, I have paperwork that proves it. Okay, so uh, after last month's runaway success with the music quiz, my agent has been on the phone nonstop saying, <laughs> "Graham, <laughs> you've got to do something because Chris is getting all the limelight." from the four people listening to the show <laughs> so uh i've, I've just like reviews. look, look you know so i have come up with my my oh, yeah. channel five knockoff what? version of your of your game show of, of clue connections clue connections um, yes what indeed. I, what i th- what i like was the fact that i created clue connections to yes. stop us competing and so that we didn't do <laughs> petty <laughs> and you've gone no i'm gonna create a game to no because that's, exactly, that's what we, we are, do. We are that's what we do. Petty, childish. <laughs> you, love this. Competitive you will love this. You will love that, this. You yeah, should know better, but. Okay. I did think about it, making a theme theme tune for this. Like, hey, look, just you wait till my next time. It's an intro. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I mentioned, I'm going to do a theme tune, but I've decided against it. To Otherwise, I don't have to sing it, and nobody really wants that. So, are you ready for. Under the covers. <laughs> Under the covers. Hang on a minute. Okay. <laughs> this sounds. <laughs> this is a quiz it's... show. Who wants to be it's player a... one? Who wants to be player two? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll be player two. Mr. B can be player one. Oh, great. Right. Okay. He, he, did, he did say he was. Uh, go, it was a Channel Five knockoff. So yeah, because basically is... he's gone. Well, yeah, Chris has like done all the original versions, really. and I'll go for all the cover versions. That's right. Cool. So, then. Under the cover. So basically, I will give you three. Strangely apt, given this sounds like a massive cover version. Anyway, carry <laughs> on. <laughs> I'll give you three song titles, Mr. I'm, B. I'm phoning Okay, go on this. then. And you have to tell me which ones of those uh, are cover versions. Yeah, okay. All right. I will give you extra bonus points if you can tell me who recorded them originally. Oh, okay. okay. So is this it is actually Doc off? So is it one or two? <laughs> so, are you ready? Okay, go on. Player one. The first one out of the bag, God Gave Rock and Roll to You by Kiss. Uh, we Built This City on Rock and Roll by Starship. Or Brothers in Arms by Dire Straits. Which of those is a cover version? And the clock starts now. Who was it? Who, uh, um, Ofcom as well, if you don't mind. I need to have a chat with them. No, uh, I, you, I, Argent. No, I can't. No, can't come up. With well, anyway, Mister B, you are absolutely right. God gave rock and roll to you by by Kiss. Uh, I forget the name of the band. Was a, well, it was a, it was a cover version. It was a bit of a disappointment. This always it was originally by Argent, so I'm going to give you extra points there, but that is okay. incredible knowledge. So, um, yeah, no, I did, no, I, a confession. I did covers as a well, during the pandemic. I did cover versions as a, as a, every week for my family quiz. Oh, we, so I've got we, a oh, no, if I'd known that, I got a slight <laughs> advantage there, but I was like <laughs> trying to remember stuff from like four okay. years ago. It's like. Well, so, well, okay, yeah. an open open question. What film did this feature in? God gave Bill and Ted's Excellent um, Adventures. Oh, yeah, Bill and Ted. <laughs> it wasn't Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. No, it was Excellent Adventures. They, Adventure. do it at the end. they do it at the end on the stage. Yes, they do. Yeah, uh, they, because they have to go back and learn how to learn, play. They do. And then the, uh, and the so disappointing, then. With the girls, makes no sense whatsoever after that film. Yeah. Um, but I was always thought it was a bit disappointing because it's like they're going to go away and learn an awesome rock song. God gave rock and roll to you, really? I mean, I would have chosen Rain in Blood by Slayer or something a bit more interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe I mean, it was the, the rights they had and the fact that it was a you know mainstream okay. film. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. All right, player two, are you ready to go? It's that to your key. Yes, absolutely. The sham. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first one. Uh, Ring of Fire. Some- 
Just Bye. so we're clear, you get some documentation in a couple of days okay. from. Uh, <laughs> who's, I'd, re- who, I'd read it very carefully. Who, why, this isn't the same as yours. It's mm. miles away. Is it? Go is on. It? <laughs> Come on. Ring of Fire, Johnny Cash. Yes. Let me entertain you, Robbie Williams. Yes. And when two become one by the Spice Girls. Uh, when two become one, I think is a cover. Oh, I actually, don't know that one. Uh, well, Ring of Fire is the right answer. Oh. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash, yes, it was originally by... Back, back in that day, they didn't do a lot of original stuff, you know? It was originally by Anita Carter. Uh, okay. Very um, nice. So there you go. Uh, okay, player one, back to you. And uh, you're All winning 2-0. Right. Uh, we have uh, the song Under the Bridge by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. We Care A Lot by Faith No More. And Bong Track by Rage Against the Machine. Sorry. What if any of those are bong the, track? Bong track, range against the machine. God, I don't. What uh, if any of those are cover versions? Ah, uh, I don't know. Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, we care a lot. That's the best I've got. I don't. No, think the answer is none of them, Mister B. A them. trick question. Oh, hang on. Oh, I'm just trying hang to on. You know, it's you a out under the bridge. Oh. Under the bridge was covered by. It, 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 all Saints. Exactly. There you go. Unfortunately, Mr. B, none of them would have been the right answer. See, this is a nasty, it's an evil game, this. Evil. It is, it is, yeah. it is. Yeah. Okay, player two. It's on UK TV Plus, not mm-hmm. Channel 5. Your chance uh, to 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 to, uh, to snatch, to get yourself back in. Back into. In, back contention. into the game. Uh, the song, uh, Here I Go Again, by Whitesnake. Yeah. Uh, Alone, by Hart. Or in the army now, by status quo. Hmm. Which one of those, if any, <laughs> if any, uh, I don't think. I think here I go again. Oh, I don't know. I don't know the middle one. I can't. Oh, who was the last one? Dire Straits. No, you've had here I go again from yeah. White Snake. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alone by Heart. Yeah. And In the Army Now by Status Quo. Oh, I know this one. I know this one. I'm going to say Alone by Heart. No. Uh, The right answer is In the Army Now by Status Quo. It it was like some weird Norwegian thing, wasn't it? It's exactly right, Mr. B. It totally was. It was there. And I was like, I just, it just seems like easy prey. I could have I could have taken Here I Go Again because oh, yeah. Here I Go Again was re-recorded by White Snake in 1987, but was originally from the uh, from one of their earlier albums. It's like um, the Wild Horses thing from Rolling Stones. Here we, we go. Had yeah. Okay, player two, you ready? I'm just to be absolutely. Oh, just to be, I think it's going to I think it's going to go for the kill on this one. I just want to point out he is he will have beaten us both on music quizzes now. This is the man that we need to take to pub quiz. He is seriously good at this stuff. Okay, you ready, Mr. B? Put me under pressure. You're 2 0 up. Uh, Okay, Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds. Oh, love that. Oh, yeah. Red Red Wine by UB40. And Tide is High by Blondie. Which, if any of those, are cover versions. So, what was the second one again? The second one was Red Red Wine by UB40. And the third one was Tide is High. That's easy. Red Red Wine is a Neil Diamond song. Correct. So Are you good. done? It's... You're yeah, done. I, that's all I got. Tide I don't is know High is also a cover version. Is it? Is it a cover? I thought it was covered again later. But... Yeah, no, was... it was originally by, I will tell you in a second, if you'll let me uh, find it. It was originally by the, pa- the Paragons, would you believe? You 13 go. years I didn't earlier. Know didn't know that. Here we go. Very good. So just two points again, by, though. Uh, uh, I remember, was it done by Nuclear Pussy? Uh, I don't know, to be truthful, but um, there we go. The only one I read is obviously the Blondie sorry, version. Uh, sorry, um, Atomic Kitten Attic. Sorry, my... Nuclear my, Pussy. My, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my he's gone for always, a lovely gag. Beautiful joke. Oh, my well dad done. always calls some Nuclear Pussy, and it's just... Mr. Mr. Inclusive does it again. Right. <laughs> Ready? Right. Player I'm one. Mr. Mr. Brunettes look the same. Uh... Yes, I'm, back, yeah. Come on then. Back to Let's, you. So I can get a point. Get you a point here. Uh, every rose has its thorn. Poison. Classic. 
Proud Mary by Tina Turner. Which and don't you don't come around here no more, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Uh, I'm well, Proud Mary. I am probably going to be. I'm going to say Proud Mary is being. Proud Mary is the right answer. Originally yeah. by you'll know. This. I. Hmm. I, I want to say Aretha Franklin, but I don't think that's correct. No, it's you know the band. Ah, uh, I do. Nope. CCJ. Uh, it's clear clear water water revival. Revival. CCR, in fact, CCR, so CCJ. CCJ. That's CCJ. CCJ. That's CCJ. Like CCJ. CCJ. Court judgment. Look different. Yes, <laughs> which is what you will be <laughs> getting in the post. <laughs> okay. That's right. on your mind already. Mr. B, still four nil up now. Don't um, worry. How is that four nil up? I got a point. Oh, four one. I do beg your pardon. Apologies. Is this the last round? No, no. Wait a minute. Oh, no, what, this, this round, and then, and then, and then there's a quick fire round to give oh, us a chance. To, all this to show is in. now is me oh, and Graham quick. doing music quizzes. That's all it is. <laughs> quick fire. Just watch those listener numbers. There's a lot of drop. Quick. Drop like a stone. Okay. Well, it might increase. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? There's a lot of pressure. Okay. In quick fire. Okay. There is. Okay, Mister B, you ready? Yeah, go on. Uh, I love rock and roll, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. Roxanne by the Police and Perfect Day by Lou Reed. Which, if any, uh, I love rock and roll. I guess I know it was British, but I don't know who did it. Okay, I well, let's, I don't expect you to. I don't uh, know who did it. But, one, um, one point. Yeah, because oh. um, Roxanne was definitely written by Sting and. Um, was it though? Oh no, not thing. Oh, and um, is it a police? Uh, as opposed well, to... yeah, police. And um, what's it? Um, Perfect day is about um, a day that Lou Reed spent on heroin. Which That's is right. Like, it was. Which and is, it's, it's like, not... why did they use that for children in need? I mean, did they didn't have? Did they not have the internet? They they did. They well, did. no. <laughs> it's, they got used for children in need in what? Nineteen ninety seven. Something like that. And it's like, does anyone bother to ask him what yeah. it's about? Well, like, it's interesting enough in, in the video at the end of it, Lou Reed goes, Shh. like that's, I don't know if that's him saying, hey, whatever you do, don't <laughs> tell them. This is basically about me. I am getting off a mid, ton off of mid, cash. Off my tits and on heroin for a long time. And I it's a fantastic song about it. song, though. It is a fantastic song. But there's a lot of songs about heroin that when you think, oh, they're about heroin. Shit. Oh yeah, what was it? Uh, the one that I used to sing along to in the car, Go- Golden Brown. Golden Brown was the that, um, like, Stranglers, of course. You did. Yeah. <laughs> that one was like. It's all about any, heroin. Any Guns and Roses song? Uh, a, yeah, a Mr. Brownstone. You, Mr. Yeah. Brownstone. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, so Songs Mr. About B, heroin. What a fun you, round that'll be. Yeah. <laughs> just, just the one point, Mr. B. So that puts you at five one ahead though i am impressed with you you do well in the cover round but okay quick fire round ready gents sure. first one you will say it's... the words cover and whoever says the words cover first or no, not cover okay gets the point ready all right tiffany i think we're alone now uh, cover. that is cover cover chris is correct i will always love you whitney houston uh not cover or no, yeah, I don't I think it's a cover. Take your first answer. I thought I thought it was a cover. Are you saying it's a cover or not, Mr. B? I said I thought it was a cover. Mr. B is right. Originally by his Mr. B's favourite girl, Dolly Parton. Oh, of course. Uh, walk this way, Larry Smith. Uh, that not, is not, not a cover. So that is not a cover, correct? So uh, I think Chris, Chris just yeah. nicked it. So Chris has got two. You've got one in this round. Tina Turner, the best. Oh, not a cover. Not cover? It is a cover. Ah. Bonnie Tyler. Originally recorded that. I didn't know that either. Uh, okay, so it's still 2 1 to Mr. B, right? No, to Chris, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Taking your scores, uh, Chris is on three, Mr. B's on six. Six three. Oh, yeah, okay. All the young dudes are not on the hopple, 1972. Uh, cover. Cover. No, not a cover. Oh, First the recorded cover. by them, Bowie wrote it and then covered it later. Oh, come on. No. Oh, oh. oh that's, no, that, that's tricky, but yeah, no, no, it counts. Oh. See, I said 1972, Motten Hopple. Uh, uh, Wayne for Alibi, Thin Lizzy. Not a cover. Oh. Oh, Mr. A... B's in there, but not a cover. Taking us towards the seven. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't know. Uh, Joker and the Thief, Wolf Mother. Not a cover. Correct. Mm-hmm. Another point to Chris. Seven. 
four. four. Summer of 69, Brian Adams. No, uh, not a cover. Correct. Chris just nipped in there again. Oh, seven five. It's getting close. One way or another, Blondie. That is not a cover. Not a cover. Oh, Mr. B gets the point. Eight four. Twist and shout by the Beatles. Not a cover. Not a cover. It, it is a cover. cover. Yeah, I, as soon as I said it, as soon as I said it, I was like, that uh, is. Same, same, yeah. Okay, same well, Mr. B, musical genius, uh, gets a massive 8 4. Well played. Okay, Mr. B, over to you for the next quiz. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no, no pressure. <laughs> Great. So I've got to come up with an original. You've got to come up with an original. An original if, rip off of your two of, of, of your two versions. Yeah, or something else, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was just going to go with a, a traditional opening of comparing you to something stupid. No, 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 no. no, no, no the, those, now the bar has been set, mate. You've got to do it. Those times are over, Mister P. People expect people were talking about this quiz when I was playing games. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's and that's the driving thing, isn't it? The uh, Lord Emperor himself, Greg Dan, commented on yeah. uh, on it as well. So you know, we have to we have to keep up appearances now. I guess we do. A, a year eight, the, the, the year of diversification. Absolutely. Anyway, folks, enough. We're not actually a music quiz show. We are actually a heresy show. <laughs> Shall we move on to something heresy related? So let's let's actually talk about what we're going to do talk about tonight. It's oh, nothing to do with music yeah, 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 whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. Um, well played, I must admit, Mr. B. Every time you play this game, I'm super impressed. Okay. I'm not. I've no idea how. Well, you, you know, just have you one retain. Those, you're, you retain you're, yeah, you just you just retain information, my friend. Yeah, okay. That's true. I'm annoyed about. The, the twist and shout one because as soon as I said it's not a cover, one, is it? I, 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 I beat like, everything. Of course it is. Yeah. I know. It oh, it's like back then people would like do like songs and then someone else would nick it. They would. Yeah. It was, well, not nick it. People record it in England and then cover it in America yeah. and then get a chart in America on America. Oh yeah, it's like um um oh I was gonna say there's um the animals did uh, did um a cover of uh sent it back to Georgia except they changed it to Walker. You know, I think Walker in Newcastle. If yeah. You, Geordie. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Got you. Okay, we ready? Okay, right. So anyway, folks, now that you're here and we've attracted your attention, uh, here's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about this month's new releases, as we always do, and we'll provide our own tangential view of that. Uh, we're also going to be talking about all the things we've been up to, uh, have a quick glance at the State of the Union, and I think Aunt Sally might be coming in to give Wurzel a smile later on. In Sally's happy endings. So uh, let's, without sure further ado, and try and bring some of our listeners actually back into the fold and move Hi. on to new releases. Come on, Mr. B. Delight us, tantalise us with some of these plasticky resin treats. All right. Well, we'll start off. There's, a, there's some stuff that we've had before. It's just been re-released. Loyalist T Titan Legion dice, Traitor Titan Legion dice, both 25 quid. Just a set of dice for Adeptus Titanicus. They've not changed them to make them work for, um, for, for, for what you call it, uh, Legion Imperialis. So... Yeah, okay, fair enough. Oh. Then you've got the Solara, Volta, Ataris, Astorum, and Metallica transfer sheets. Does Imperialis require its own sort of dice set, if that makes sense? I don't believe it does. I think okay. it's just... Just D6s, um, like normal D6s. It normal... has got some weird dice in there, if you look. In the it's a D10. Oh, and there's, there's... yeah, that's in that. But in the um, Imperialis set, I think it's just D10 and a scatter dice, if I remember correctly. Uh, Sorry, uh, D6s okay. and a scatter. A scatter dice. Okay. I'm just looking it up now. Yeah, just D6s and a scatter. No leg dice or anything like that. Uh, okay, cool. I'm very curious. Very okay. good. So then you've got Solaria, Volpa, Atarius, Astorum, Metallica transfer sheets, 15 quid each. Um, hey. So they're, they're handy for your Titans. Mm. Uh, we've, then we've got the Great Slaughter. Uh, the army book that's uh, just, well, the new expansion that so concentrates on Beta Garmon um, for uh, in Legion Imperialis. It is mm. a hardback that is £30 uh, from uh, Games Workshop or £25.50 from Element Games. However, it is out of stock everywhere. Um, oh, yeah. Because, uh, well, there isn't, there's kind of a bit of an issue. Uh, that I'm that I've been told of. I don't know whether it's definitely that is that that's absolutely the case. But apparently, 
Um, there are significant delays on paper products because of the situation in the Red Sea. Yeah. Uh, um, I can, oh, okay, yeah. That so makes sense. We uh, are minorly affected to work. We ordered a, we've got a refit. We ordered more packaging to go with our refit. Yeah. We ordered it November time, I think. And it is still making its way around South Africa. Yeah, because uh, uh, basically a lot you can't a lot of companies aren't insuring ships going through the Suez mm. Canal right now uh, because they've got to go through the Houthis. I think there was, there was some news on earlier today. I think they've killed two people now. Um, they sunk a boat the other day, didn't they? Yeah, and uh, uh, so a lot of the paper products. So apparently they air freighted a bunch of stuff over for that this weekend. No, okay, like, right. I see so, what you mean. Yeah. I don't know whether that's definitely the case or not, but it, it's plausible. Um, yeah, so you could, but you can get the EPUB, which I've done, twenty pounds ninety nine, uh, directly from Warhammer Digital. So, lovely, uh, probably the best way to get it at the minute. Uh, the cards, army cards, they were twelve fifty or ten sixty two element games. They sold out like instantly. <sighs> probably the same issue. We don't know if they're being restocked. I don't know if you really need them, but anyway, nice to uh, have the cards, though, isn't it? It is nice, have the convenient. Cards. Yeah. Uh, then you've got Legion Imperialis Spartan Assault Tanks. You get, uh, is it four of them in a box for 30 quid? Yeah, yeah four looks, of them in a box. Here's for an interesting thing, though. Have you noticed that they've got laser destroyer arrays on them? And uh, laser, so the Spartan comes with laser destroyer arrays or quad, yeah, it's got, it's got quad quad last cannons. But, you, the, but there's no slight... plastic version of that. No. There isn't, but there is on them. Um, yeah, so it's quite interesting to see. Yeah, mm. that there's a slightly different model for the laser destroyer. There right? should be quite right, and I think it'd be <laughs> cool if we had that. In yeah, no, but maybe normal. they'll do a maybe they'll do a plastic upgrade. I too. hope they do because the laser destroyer is not a bad shout on a Spartan. To be honest That's uh, thirty quid for a box of four or twenty five pounds fifty at element games. To be honest, most of this stuff is twenty is twenty five fifty at element games and thirty pounds at, at, at um. Uh, games workshop i'll tell you if it's different then you've got uh, malcolm uh, in furnaces and and uh valdor tank destroyers okay and these are cool and it makes me hope that these are going to go plastic as well it seems to be the the way doesn't it they're just yeah. scale scale down the kit and yeah. scale up again uh so you get two two malcador in furnaces and two uh valdors valdors i suspect the valdors are probably more useful than the furnaces but i'm not playing the game yet two um, valdors you say interesting Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've got the uh, Astarte support, which basically comes. This looks with quite cool. Yeah, but it's, it's got four um, Leviathans, four um, Derigeos, uh That's a few, uh, four Tarantulas, and four yeah. um, Rapiers. So these look quite cool. They makes, do look cool. Yeah, makes it makes me hopeful that some of this, some of the other stuff is going to come to plastic because Tarantulas in plastic would be great. Um, and then we've got so lot of silly. They were in the PDF is. Their, yeah, their probably. legacies is their time has probably been and gone. Probably unless they and kind then, of redo them for like in a campaign book, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Uh then Remember we've got solar auxilia support, which but is actually again, plastic rapiers would be good. Do they do plastic oh. rapiers? They don't, do they? No, no. Oh, yeah. They're forge world. Mm. I will they, see them I will at some point, I'm sure. Mm. I hope so. Uh then the uh solar auxilia get rapiers, a bunch of rapiers. Um, and some tarantulas and some uh, cyclopses. So even teenier, tinier cyclopses. Okay. So, absolutely. I mean, wow. I suppose you could use that as the base for uh, to represent it on the all, <coughs> uh, 32 mil. Um, <laughs> you could, I suppose. Just so you've got the AIM version of the model on the base. It might be yeah. teeny tiny, but it's... Yeah. Okay. Quite cool. scale. I think they're very, very big, are they? Yeah. I mean, uh, I think, yeah, but they vague. I think I've got some. They are about the same size as a, what was Epic Land Raider kind of thing. So you yeah. could probably just yeah, yeah. save yourself a few quid and probably buy some plastic Land Raiders. They were quite expensive when I bought them. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, then we have uh, some, um, this is uh, interesting, a Scout Squad, 40 quid or 34 pounds. Oh, these games. Primaries? Um, I don't know. I don't know. But basically, hey, they're still... Sure, you mate. You like your Primaris. They, they do, do the Primaris, don't they? They, they do. Enormous. They do look bigger. I think they're like on 28 mil bases now, but they're the only scouts that we've got. So I'm not sure how what we're supposed to do scout-wise uh, because these mm. are the only models. And only one of them's got a sniper rifle. There's only one one sniper rifle in the box, which is Nuts. annoying. When sort of standard scouts for Warhammer Forge Caves? 
Mm. You find them auto wield to all ah. You find options for auto wield either in a starty shotgun or bolt gun. So maybe they just maybe it's okay. just a thing of a thing of scale in the image. Maybe it's yeah. Just, Got you. I see what you mean. But they, they don't have bigger because the poses are better. Yeah, they don't have um uh, a, a, a full squad of sniper sniper scouts anymore. It's a shame, uh, man. <clears throat> which is annoying because mm. that's really handy and. It means you're going to have to get creative, but you yeah. know, just as just as just as we get them, they get rid of them. Yeah. Typical. Thirty-four pounds at Element Games. Then you've got the Seed Breaker console, who we we was revealed this month. We haven't spoken to, about him yet, but what do you guys think of the model? I think it came I, out. Well, I think we gave him a fairly. We gave the um, HQ choice in general a fairly shoddy. Uh, Short shrift. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not overly impressed. I quite like him. So I, like I, the fact, I hate the Mark Six I head. The, I hate the Mark Six head, but I like oh, yeah. the I data like the Mark... pad thing. So do I. Yeah. It's really cool with that three D terrain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, I think a, a nice lot of touch. people have commented on how Games Workshop should, uh, 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 you know, put a, tra- uh, a copyright trademark or whatever on um, uh, pattern. That's it on the uh, screen that you can use with gloves on. Mm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> good point. Good um, um, Thunderham is always useful, so that does make him slightly more effective, I guess. But yeah. It's not a bad model. I think if you had non beaky head, and I'm not a big fan it's, of the. It's just a weird hybrid armor, though, isn't it? Because you've got that um, yeah. the groin protector that looks like it's off Mark Three. Mm. You've yeah, got the you Mark Five pauldron on the other. It just mm-hmm. he would just look better in Mark Three or mm-hmm. Mark Two. I just think. I think just, a better Seas Breaker model is the one you get exclusively from Warhammer down. World Warhammer World that is a um that's a the sold as a Praetor. Comes with Thunder Hammer and a Volkite. Mm. Be Volkite. Yeah. I'm not quite sure about his, his bedroom face. He looks very surprised. <laughs> he's definitely mm. he's definitely been Bro. taking some uh, <laughs> what do I do with that? He's definitely been he's taking He's got the magic some... pants on from earlier. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely been <laughs> taking some influences from June, I think. Yeah, he's got a little oh, bit of. There is a little bit of Harkonnen going on there, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Well, the, and the, the nose, nose thing. plug. The yeah. nose plug thing, yeah. All right. Okay. Yep. Anyway. Uh, okay. okay, so he's, he's yeah, there. there. Uh, you also have some Dark Angel dice that they've sold out, so we'll not linger on those. Um, Dark Angels upgrades and transfers. Now, I include these because your shoulder pads there, uh, most of them, although Primaris, are actually um, fine for Mark IV. No issue there with Mark IV. Uh, a lot of these uh and some of the some of the accessories and bits are fine but most of it's not going to be good for you but some of it will be i quite like that though. you've got the, the heads and the shoulder pads and the little gribbly guy and some cool bits and, like, and the transfer for 21 quid that actually seems pretty good value yeah it's if not I'm bad. honest okay. it's not bad it's better than the old pack that was like six yeah, quid and you got five shoulder pads Terminated mm. plasma cannon. That's you know, that's pretty 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 nat- eight, natty. Eight or eight or nine quid on uh, egghead miniatures any day of the week. Yeah. Probably, but yeah, I mean, definitely get some. I mean, the only thing I would be personally, as a, as a you know, speaking of forty k, is you only get one Raven Wing um, bit, and it's like, yeah, but you, you get Raven Wing and squads are free. So anyway, gotcha. Uh, hey, look, okay. They gotta make their money somehow. They do. Uh, okay, so that's seventeen pound eighty five at Element Games. Uh, then you've got, this was a great one, the Solar Auxilia Battle Group at £130 from Games Workshop. Also £130 at Element Games, because I don't know why, but, you know, oh. but, uh, I, I'm assuming it's to, to to avoid them being hit by scalpers straight away. So, oh. yeah, so t- we'll talk about this in a We've got a bit more in-depth to talk about this in, but you've got 20 Laz Rifle men, uh, five Command Squad, um, plus an extra Secret Command Squad person as well uh a lehman russ uh of the heavy sentinel and a trapezium so what do you guys think of this box good it's a good box yeah yeah oh, it's using 28 mil is it i've just realized I was it thinking, is it is 28 mil i mean i mean it's not Imper- imperialis oh yeah it's i was just thinking for uh-huh. imperialis like just a fortune um uh-huh. yeah and no, i think it's yeah it's good value i um i have bought one yeah no I've yeah we know we know we know you get into the oligarch territory for your fancy armies I'm I'm just going with this, and then I'll see what what were there. I'm just like Lehman Rust looks nice. nice. The new plastic Lehman Rust looks good, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a plastic um, Dracosian. Dracosian. Yeah. 
Makes that worthwhile, I, I think. Yeah, I mean... Transfers. Yeah, it's, so, not, it's a so, good set. Yeah, I, I wouldn't... I, I, I don't have no real interest in I've buying got a solar ops. Really so and a big solar ops. Really on the, but I've used it, like, once. Yeah. It's kind of... It's on the bottom of the pile, which usually means it's going to get sold soon. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of like basically in, any army that kind of gravitates towards the bottom of the pile mm. of armies is usually um, on short shrift. Uh, it's, 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 it looks nice. Um, Mr. B, you'll know the oh. answer to this question. Yep. Do we or have we seen, because I, ha- I haven't and I may have entirely mm-hmm. missed it, a, seen a data sheet or such like for this uh, chunky Sentinel. Sentinel? Yeah, yes, we, have. we are and we got it later on in the... In the okay. Day, okay. They're actually pretty handy. Yeah, okay. well, not yeah, bad at all. I think not bad so. at all. Um, yeah, re- really nice little set there. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm just going to use it as a, you know, a, a, an ally detachment, and then I see just, where we go from there. See if I can do it. I just want to take. I just want to put arms on the side of it. I don't know why. <laughs> I look at it, and I just think I just want to put a pair of grabby arms. Coming out. <laughs> yeah. It just makes me think of the things in um, Avatar. One of the cool <laughs> things about it, though, is it's really super easy to magnetize the weapons. Apparently. Oh, nice. So uh right, okay. Then we've got um solar auxilia dice, twenty-five quid or twenty pound at L1 games. Your, 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 your mileage varies on that. They look all right, but uh whites uh, uh, they're twenty-five or twenty pound at element games. Then you've got a white scar storm seer, which is a mm. really, really nice um nice model. I'm not well, clicking on the helmet. Jib. The helmet isn't actually as bad as it is for a lot of generic stuff, I think, but because it looks a bit white scarry. Yeah, I kind yeah. of it doesn't look too terrible in Mark Six that one. But the bear head is just like that. Really What's going on with his ears? He's just, he doesn't have ears. It, it, he's, he's he's purely just full sound machine now. He just he's just he's got like a pair of Doctor Dre beats on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a, it's What's got, going on there? No wonder he's screaming. Ah, it's like he's, he's got, got white noise pumped into his. He's got, the, he's got the hue going on in the, in his ears. He's listening to um. Oh God! What are they called? The he's the your music quiz. That's what he's doing. That's what that's he's, what he's that doing. Face. That's what he's putting that face for. Say, twist and shell. <laughs> you fool! <laughs> ah. All right. I knew it was a cover. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, he's a nice model. Um, really glad to see him come to come to um, sale. Uh, just a shame he's uh, temporarily out of stock. But that's a that's a thing. I mean, that's system a, of a down. Oh. That's what I was thinking. It took me about ah. five minutes to get there. But yes, here's the thing. With the white scars that if if i saw a space marine walk around with that staff with what i assume is an animal head on the top of it i would think yeah i'm <laughs> sure they're meant to be doing this stuff right well you're the good guys are you sure sh- because sh- sh- that's kind of weirdly druidic yeah. and you're off you're off down a particular road there <laughs> yeah Love yeah. the horse's head and all you've done a wonderful <laughs> job of flensing all the skin from it but yeah. uh should you be waving it around on a stick yeah what I do With like some about feathers. it is it's it isn't I don't know it's like it's not exactly Mark Six it's got it got it's definitely Mark Six ish but there definitely seems to be some influences from Mark Two there as well so I'm not I one thing I do like about his poses is is the fact that the wind is following the direction that he's directing the staff mm. which is pretty cool it's a cool little um oh yeah cool the little detail. Tray. You know, he's he's casting some elemental nonsense mm. with his non uh, warp attuned powers, and yeah, the, the armor's flowing like that, which is cool. I like that. That's that's been well thought out. Yeah, uh, he's he's twenty six pounds fifty, as is the next guy, the dark emissary. And I think we, let's uh, let's just get the face out of the way. I was going to say, talking about bedroom face, this guy is he's rocked up. <laughs> <laughs> and he is very, very disappointed with what he's seeing. It's, it's like it's like Mark, it's like Mark Strong, but um, if you whip some sort of uh, stink bomb under his face, he's not happy, is he? He's, he's definitely not. whatever's happened or is about to happen. He is not amused. He's <laughs> he's realised. He's realised there's that, there's more than one. There's more than. <laughs> but this is a group effort. It, he wasn't expecting it. I think it's oh. more of a he's he's walked into a situation. Uh, that he's thought better of after a few shandies. Yeah, he's not. He's done. Oh, what? What are his rules again? Is this? Is he got? He's a. He's a sort of special console 
for yeah. the Sons of Horus. Um, you'll have to bear with me for, for moments as I look up his rules. Do you know, I've never used him because you use him as a, with an allied attachment in with Sons of Horus. Yeah. No, he's in the main. He's in the main. The main shooting. Uh, actually. Okay. He's in, in the model is actually quite nice. It isn't yeah. bad. I mean, he could be a herald, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah quite yeah. easily. There's a few things I think you could use him for quite comfortably. And we all know what we think about heralds in this in this neck of the wood. Oh, we love him. We love a herald. Uh, yeah, he could be a herald. Um, could even be just a, you know, oh, I was just about to say a praetor, but no, not really. It's not really armed for that. I mean, you, you could, I mean, even even like an um, library. Maybe a library. Library. Even, yeah, library. Yeah, he's terrorist, yeah. maybe. Yeah, there's a few. That's a few. I mean, what's the difference between his thing that he's holding, which is, again, is a skull, mm. you know, I mean, the double standards going on are frankly. Well, I mean, all we've got to do is look at the, the space wolves. I mean, are we not psychers? Oh, really? What's what are you then? Well, we it's just ruin the sense. weather. Yeah, yeah, flipping hypocritical. I mean, wolf lovers, right? Uh, Sons of Horus. Uh, he is, like I say, he's a specialist. Um, one of the so there aren't that many actually, are there? Some of them have them, some of them don't. Have specialist chapters. HQs. HQs. Yeah. Some of them do, but yeah. not all of them. See what yeah. I find him. Dark emissary. Okay. Uh, I've got it up right now if you want. Okay. The, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Go on. Uh, so he gives he gives the War Master's Eye special rule. So if Dark yeah. Emissary is selected as a compulsory HQ choice in an Allied detachment, yeah, he's very much in the Allied detachment with yeah. the traitor allegiance. Then all models in the Allied detachment with the Legion of Starty Sons of Horus special rule and stubborn gain stubborn. That's super. Uh, super. Mm. Useful, absolutely. Uh, he may not said take a jet bike, but he may not. Sorry, he may not take a jump pack or a jet bike yep. or a combat bike or such like. Yeah. Uh, uh, he get he has a staff of dark authority. Yeah. Strength plus one, AP three, melee unwieldy. Blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, murder strike six plus. Oh, he's murder strike. Yeah. He's, he's useful for his. He's useful for the stubborn. Yeah, yeah that's, he's, he's a force multiplier in that yeah, regard. That the the rest of him is um, feels very femey. I like it. Yeah, it's it's a shame actually because you couldn't. Oh, even he him. gets anyone within six inches of him increases their leadership when taking morale for pinning. Oh, that's good. Morale check when taking a morale check or pinning check. Okay, cool. Hmm. So he's not actually that. He's not actually that not useful. So. No, he's, he sounds pretty he's, good. He's someone you um, want for, in a in a yeah. Death Star. Yeah. If you had a, if you're not a detachment Death Star, so if you had a yeah. set of Reavers, for example, you're yeah. pretty useful with them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have to take one troop choice. Obviously, you, the problem is you couldn't take the Reaver Assault um, Lord uh, Right of War okay. because you have to take a Master of Signals, and you don't take one HQ choice in an Allied detachment. So yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, then we've got the uh, lovely Apothecary detachment that I think people have been waiting for. So um, that's really nice, except sold out online. 30 quid for two Apothecaries, one in Mark VI and one in Mark V. I much prefer that to the old black resin. I do as well. They're both, they're still resin. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I never do. liked the one of them had like a weird backpack. Oh, with the. Uh, um... They've both got weird backpacks now. Yeah, but they were kind of sensible weird, in the weird. Uh, okay. His was just a bit too weird for my, <laughs> my limited tastes. I like his, um, I like yeah. his helmet actually. I, I do think these are much better than the um than the the Mark uh, the Mark Four and Mark Two ones that we had. Was it Mark yeah. Two? Yeah. Yeah. I think they were Mark Four, and Mark Two. Yeah, it must have been. But yeah, yeah I, I think these are pretty good actually. Mark, I, like Mark that. I like the helmet Sorry. on the the one that's painted up in, in uh, Imperial Probably. Fists. The Mark V, yeah. Because it's in yellow, that's why. No, it's absolutely not. And with anyway, a, a Templar symbol on his knee pad as well. So. I noticed that, yeah. We'll sneak that in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do like that. It's a good model and the you know, little vials and things coming 15, on. Then. 15 quid a model. That's not too shabby. Not in this Not in this day and age. Not in this day and age. I mean, you'd, be paying that well, for, so. you'd be paying that pretty much. You'd be paying more than that for plastic. Yeah, in the, for just the one, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I must admit, I, I would have liked it if they kept the old set on sale still. Just you've got a lot more variety for you. But I get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's all about the Mark, Mark 6 these days. It is, yeah, totally. Yeah, but that Mark 5 one, as, as soon as I can grab one, I'm going to get a, the Mark 5 guy at least. I'll put, well, it's yeah, a two-pack, I mean, so... Yeah. The fact that you can get so, take so many of them these days as well. Yeah. Do you take 10 as a one choice or something crazy like that? 
and they're worth it. Yeah. Every day of the week. Every day of the week. Brilliant. And that is the new releases. There's one tangential item which I think is cool. Oh. We'll have a 40k orc chopper. Yes, Let's make it. When you, are at, when, you are, when you are at an event like uh, Oof, ski. Um, something and you need to open up a, a bottle, you may as well use something that looks like a flipping axe to open up your, your beer. Okay. I just want to... If I am against someone <laughs> at an event and they bring out their orc chopper <laughs> bottle opener, I will decide that I'm that friendly Chris... May have building. to may have to switch off. <laughs> um, uh, Winner okay. or cost, Chris what, what may across? need to come out. Yeah, okay, fair I, still, I think it looks cool, but because yeah. okay, um, I mean, how many bottles do you open? I mean, who's selling in again in this day and age? Anywhere you go to, where they just sell you a drink these days, is taking the top off before you even uh, makes a good point. look at it. This yeah, is, yeah, because you might fill it with other liquids and <laughs> open it someone. Okay, fair enough then. All right, shall okay. we move on to what we've been up to? Let's what do that. We've been up to. Next out of the bag, what have we been up to? What we have been up to? We we catchy jingles. That's what we need to work on next. Well, we've got the um, we've got the handy um little manatee we've thing. Got our, so we've got a little, little, little jingle that comes little up. Little jingles for each yeah. thing. All right, okay. I'll I'll try and clean yeah. something up. Maybe we should think of something a bit more exciting than what have we been up to as well while we're about it. If we're, you know, yeah, but <laughs> I, I, think I mean, it's comes, factually it, correct. It's, it's, it's a it's a catch-all statement. I think I, 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 will, I, will, I, will, I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. Some eight years. Eight years. <laughs> he suddenly my... brings it up now. Uh, <laughs> it's only since you mentioned it being a theme tune, I thought, oh, okay. What have we okay, been what, up to? What? You know, it's just a theme tune. What, what sing the theme have tune. we been up yes. to? <laughs> yeah. What? What have we been up to? To the to the tunes of When Will I Be Famous? Did yeah. See then. Yeah. I did. <laughs> From Bros. Okay. <laughs> Very good. What? Hey, look. hey, what? I, hey, what have we, we been up well, to? Yeah, you see, Don't it you works. Watch? See, it's perfect, right? Yeah, absolutely. Before we get a rather cease and desist letter from hey, look, from Bros Incorporated, they'll have, they'll have given up by the music quiz at the start, so they'll get that any further than that. The fact that someone's listening at that point onwards. Whew, I know. It's such, sh- it's such a shame that we can't put actually music with our music quizzes for fear of <laughs> immediate cease, cease and desist from Spotify and others. Well, YouTube will instantly take it down. That's true. Oh, uh, that is true. YouTube anyway, will just go that no. on your way. Cool. Um, I can't think what else you could call it. What else do you want to call it? Yeah, no, uh, no. I'm actually hey, sold on the Bruss theme tune. The, so, um, the internet loves it when we have on their production meetings. Uh, <laughs> right, so what have we been up to? Yeah, well, answer that question. Shall I, uh, shall I go first? Yes, being as you've got a kind of big fat zero in the in the well, gun column. That's a couple of reasons for that. A, I never fill it in. And okay. Oh, surprise, eh? <laughs> exactly. The element <laughs> of surprise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what have I been up to? I, uh, I built my assassins that I ordered. Um, oh. So, because I need to... We've got... Uh, it's now one month and five days before... Well, one month and six days, in fact, before we go to an event again. So, yeah. I need... To, I've had to get models out to do repair work and make some changes to some models. Um, so the custodies are out on the, the board. And just trying to get those all, all so many little bases that are broken and stuff like that. So it's just been tidying up um, on those. And trying to work out a list for this stupid event as well. Because also, it's not the fact you've got to take a 3,000-point list. You've also got to come up with another 200-point list. Oh, I'm just chucking a tactical squad in or two. In yeah, but have you looked at? The, but, but it's not normal points cost. Oh, yeah. It's, it, I played it. I actually played it last time, and I just used what I had. It, to yeah, I didn't give there, it too much thought. There, there is one problem. Uh, most of my infantry has got, has got jump packs attached to it. 
which I don't Ooh. think uh, uh, I think I've only got maybe a couple of Imperial Fist tactical squads kicking around. Okay, That's about it. Uh, there are some Black Templars and things like that. Uh, not Black Templars, Templar Brethren. Yeah, things. But trying to work out that two hundred point list is like I don't want to. I don't want to have to buy a two hundred point <laughs> points worth of models to take to a stupid no, you really day don't. event. So that's been fun. Yeah. And mm. I did toy with the idea of going, hey, look, this is a perfect time to get the Tanith models up and running. And then I worked out how many of those I would need to paint, assemble, and take with me. And the model count is not good. three times as many as I'm taking in my 3,000-point army. Oh. And I was like, yeah, no, that's a that's a terrible idea. Yep. That's not going to happen this time that, around either. That sounds bad. Because it's like four points for one militia person or something i mean to be fair i I played it it didn't make a huge amount of difference it just kind of gave you like a bit of advantage but not massive it wasn't like overpowered if you won that little game beforehand but they were good fun i will give you that i I, I, you know i don't want to be an arsehole that you know isn't participating if that makes sense i know what you mean yeah yeah, totally okay because i'm because i'm taking the golden boys i can't shove them in that game because a, they're not costed for it, and yeah. it would be three, it would possibly be three blokes and a. Actually, they just merge everything anyway. But it might be one bloke, and then that'll you know, just take it. Oh, yeah. They still, they still be massively overpowered. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. just been yeah getting that ready. I've got a game against Adam on Monday, um, because I need to try out. So how many points? How 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 much are you expect to lose that one by? I'm just. This was, Sorry, how much is me? Just, just, just going <laughs> on. You know, if you were a betting man. For those, for those of you that are in audio form and don't listen to this video, there wasn't a problem with your recording there. I had a moment <laughs> of silence while my soul died so due to the hurtful can't. comment of someone that I hold in very high regard. <laughs> and I, I apologize very but... dearly of who decided to basically. Stick Look, the knife in. Let, let's be honest. It sounds Probably like quite a lot. Is it sounds like uh, it, it, from from what you tell us about your games of Adam, it sounds like you know. Oh yeah, I'll nobody lose. would stand a chance against him. Yeah, they wouldn't. Um, I mean, I will probably lose quite a lot, but that's the whole. Yeah, that's the thing. So I'm gonna. I'm, I'm taking literally all infantry. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter because at this point the list is pretty much set in. I'm just gonna take all infantry, but it's. How there's an odd 120 points that I want to try maybe use an assassin in mm-hmm. and see how that goes. And if it doesn't work as I hope it's going to, that 120 points will get turned into a a, a normal spear guy and yeah. another claw guy, mm-hmm. which is a big, in, in that army, that's a big difference in points. Yeah. And then it's also, is it worth me taking the deep strike 120 points? Because then that's three or two more spear guys it's just trying to work out the things that i can drop have you seen the, um... the first mission out already yes that's the game we're gonna that's what we're gonna play all right i, I see I, I haven't played it because i'm a bit of an old old traditionalist i like going i generally like going to events and being surprised by the missions yeah i just I from a it's something different from me and adam to play and B, I just wanted to kind of get my head around it. Yeah. Um, because at first glance there looked to be a lot of moving parts in the mission. So I just wanna sort of get get yeah. it clear in my head for the weekend. I mean it's a month later that I'll be playing it, so I'll have forgotten how to roll dice probably by the time Yeah. I still last round. I'm not sure I'm completely bought into having a mission your missions before the event to be honest with you. I think yeah, I would always I would always keep them. On the uh, down low. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, we're gonna. That's that's what we're gonna we're gonna try it out and see how it goes. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's know what you think. But I need I to. I've not played it. Can I keep toying with the idea still of taking, um, El Tell with me? Mm, see, I think mm. it's a good choice. You know? I do, but I just. He's hard what, to shift. I, yeah, he's hard to shift, but it's. it's like he's, a skid, a, he's a he's a lot of points. It's like a skid, man. Uh, he is a chunk of points, and 
is he going to be a bullet magnet? But that might be a good thing. I mean, for the Emperor's favourite hall monitors, that might be a bad thing because he will at least, if he draws a load of fire, which he will have to, right? You, you, you're going to go, I, I yeah, do not want that. I just, do not want him just, rampaging when we, when his we way. Went to, when we went to Scotland, how much firepower did you... Um, yeah, I, I brought to... a 10-man last kind of squad at him and he still shot me back. Yeah, and of course, same. he can do, do reactions. So, yeah, I think... I, I, I think squad. he... I don't know what loadout I would take him with, though. Maybe close combat and one of those guns, because one of the guns isn't terrible. No, yes, I mean I've got, um, I've been trying to fight because I've mag all those weapons. Have, have you tried the L tell against? Um, no, not yet. The, the Schmidt. I haven't yet. No, I've. Uh, it's taken me ages to find his base because okay. because he was completely, other than his torso being solid, the base and the arms and everything were all magnetized because he had such a big base. It was easy to base? transport him. So mm. um, it's taken me ages to find his base and his, his accoutrements. Uh, he's, a, he's a big, he's a big boy. Do you know what he I is. found today? I think I had two of them. I found another close combat, and I mean it in the sense of put it in a sock and hit somebody with it. Um, oh, chaos yeah. dreadnought. The, the chaos nice. dreadnought. So I've got is that two going in your? Uh, is that going, going in, in my your... corrupted list? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, nice. The Absolutely. Old. I was like, wow, fantastic! What a good find. Um, the old brain smasher. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> so, well, I think I think it's worth a go because I think it'll surprise old um, Das Schmidt and his army of shooting, and it would also give him. And it's something that I've found, which I'll come on to in a minute. If you if you give your opponent, and I'm kind of buying into a little bit of some of the Chris Smith, Chris Mills way of thinking, if you give your opponent things that they've got to shoot and they've got to make decisions, then there's always a chance they might make the wrong one. Yeah. Mm. But if you're just sort of like they're reacting, then it's it's them. them. Yeah, you're kind of making them make decisions rather than you reacting to them, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the ideal world, you want them to, uh, you want either decision to be the wrong decision because because what you're putting up against them is both good. Yeah, exactly. You want more than one thing for them to focus on. So he would be replacing a... Uh, it's a chunk sort of, of points. What was he? Three hundred points. It's two hundred sixty-five points before you put anything extra on him. Mm. Um, he that would is, be replacing a, 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 a squad of hawkmen. Okay. The thing with the hawkmen, they're quick. Is, is they're quick, and their weapons are strength seven rending. Have mm. you got the? Have you got the? Um, oh, what you call it? The axes or the? Uh, not axes. The spears. Spears or spears. the? Uh, always, always take the spears. The the buckler. Okay. Uh, uh, the buckler. Is only useful against las weapons, plasma weapons, anything like that. It just reduces okay. the, the toughness by minus two. They're AP three anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, when I when I built mine, I did them the buckler and the thing, and I'm like, I'm uh, gonna get right. another set, and I haven't cool. yet. I haven't um, yet. Yeah, but this was in first edition. Yeah, yeah. The the spear ones, the gun is the same regardless if you have the pistol and the buckler, or they just have the spear. The weapon on the spear is the same as yeah. the pistol. But yeah, it's four shots, sure, four shots, strength seven, AP four, but it's rending. Mm. Six plus. So strength six, 13, rend, four shots, four guys. There's a good chance they're going to get through a fairly reasonable vehicle. Yeah. Um, even without uh, um, needing to rend. So that's my thinking with them is they might actually be my best anti-armor unit. Like a Spartan or something. Any any tank, basically. Yeah. Because they need... I mean, they're looking for fives and sixes for the bigger stuff. Sure. But yeah, I can't think of a... My John think... Tell got an anti-tank-ish gun. Yes, he does. Mm. Ish. Ish, yeah. But... It's their speed is also what makes them really useful. And again, they're, they're, mate, that's, they that's make, a really that decision. That's they? a really yeah. Good. But and they you, can do they, do they they get behind being... and hit and hit armor, rear armor and stuff like that. Do you so. not think they run the problem though of them being that much faster than the rest of your army that they're going to get? They can be kind of, you know, there's only one way to eat an elephant and that's in chunks, and they could be chunked up. I probably wouldn't move them ahead of the army. Until deep strike units are on the board. 
they, they can they can deep strike, can't they? They can. They can deep strike as well, and also they can move. Ah, but then you've got your auger scanners. Oh, a long distance. Um, then you've got your augury scanners. And you yeah, do. but there's stuff like that's mm. going to always be a nuisance. I'm kind of sanguine about that now. I can't get around there's that. There's nothing you can do about it. But I yeah. just, yeah. I, Actually, there's a good amount of Sally's about coming up. Okay. Oh, excellent. Um, so, yeah, so it's it's just deciding. Also, I need to buy a fourth veterinary and they're out of stock at for Ford World and anywhere else that I could possibly buy. What, the veterinary? Oh, veterinary. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, the hawk men are out of stock, which is okay. annoying because they weren't a few months ago. And I was like, oh, I'll wait until close to the time. Damn Where's you, internet. Way? Damn you, internet. Not even any on eBay. Mm. Oh. Okay. Actually, speaking of lances, weird enough, Power Lance overlooked yep. this as a as a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, so, Strix plus one. Just AP3. got many things to take them. That's the only thing. Reach. No, I mean, anybody can take a, who can take a power can take a power lance. Just like the normal uh, yeah, power lance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I always thought they were one of those, like, some of the charms. They're not anymore. Um, but you know what? They're not bad. Strength five AP three with reach one, so they're going before. I, I think it's again pretty useful. I think it's again one of those things where if there isn't a model for it, people tend to mm, not right. take it. Try away from it. Hard yeah. to do, isn't it? It is hard to do. I mean, but yeah, I played against somebody. I was like, wow, actually, they're a lot better than I remember them being. Reach, yeah, of course. Plus one strength AP three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's definitely one where I would say because. Games Workshop don't make one yet. There is one coming up, sort of. Um, that's one where it definitely pays you to look at your 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 um your alternative mm. model stores. I suppose the thing, the and thing also, with power I thought they were two-handed, but they're, they, they're one-handed weapons. You're mm. going to end up in uh, sort of Monty Python kind of <laughs> horse territory where you've got this this one space marine going around going. Oh yeah, with the. <laughs> with a lance under his arm. You could get one of those little um, dark angels, yeah, just gribblies, the, with, some with coconuts. coconuts instead. Yeah. You know, Ooh, watchers, yeah, of the, yeah. watchers of the Deep or whatever they are. What are they called? Mr. B. Or... Watchers yeah, in the Dark. Yeah. Watchers in the Dark. Oh, I was close. Um, hey, go me. Yeah, I mean, for those White Scars guys that aren't allowed to have the jet bikes, just, mm. you know, get them Running some dark some with some coconuts. Some yeah. coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> Not oh, oh, Concord. Yeah. Concord. <laughs> okay. Oh. I've brave Concord. I'm getting better. Um, right. Okay. So oh, basically, so you have been doing some stuff contrary I have to been the doing stuff. show yeah, notes. Yeah, Very yeah, nice. Yeah, absolutely. I just, just you know, I need. It's, it's and a bed. time. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Just, um. Yeah. So it's just getting yeah, stuff's getting done. I ordered some more of my new of my not my new my Eldar bases the other day, but they were oh, okay. getting ones. Oh, they were the. Man. I had to order them off Amazon. Oh, where um, did you get them from originally? Element Direct, originally. Element. Oh, Element. Okay. They're Element originally, but they're not going to get them back in stock until I think it's like the sixth of April. Oh, wow! Potentially, and I was like, okay, that's just. I don't need many of them. I probably have enough, but it's good to have mm. just a, two or three spares kicking around. For sure, just in case. Okay. Are the uh, alternatives like close or? Uh, I have got. So, I mean, I'm, I do have a box of webway bases that mm. are perfectly uh, usable and perfectly fine. They're just not the same. <laughs> so they're just not the same. Ah, it's, uh, it's one of those things. It's like, I can't use it because it's not the same. Exactly. Whereas no, jet that. bikes, get anything that. that's the jet bikes, the dreads, or the big l tail rather, he has a different style of base. Mm. to the rest of the army because I couldn't buy a base big enough. But the infantry guys, I've always tried to use the same 40 yeah, mil, no, I slightly that. raised up, um, which isn't always helpful because their heads point out over the top of buildings sometimes, and then it ends up in sniper territory. Oh, yeah. yeah. That does suck a bit. But... Never fun. Mm. No. Okay. It wants to go... Uh... Go next. Uh, my, mine's relatively simple. All I've really done this this past month is uh, paint up a uh, a heavy support squad for the fists uh, with he- Mars pattern heavy bolters, which are an absolute <clears throat> to get bright with the hairdryer. Okay. Those ammo belts are. I've done 
plenty of these weapons before with the ammo belts, but these are the ones that are like, ah. Okay. Cursed, just terrible. Uh, but no, I, I just was, I, I dug out some Mark II. And I was like, yeah, okay, we're going to do this. And yeah, I'm happy with it. Although, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what it is. Every time I flip and photograph fists, they look like it looks they like look my, terrible. They do. And I'm I like, think it's it's just that yellow, isn't it? It's just it's the, the, I don't know what your colours or your yeah. where you've got your um, lighting done. Maybe it's yeah. too bright. Maybe. Maybe you should. I've just got a, I've just got a. Then I get my. I, don't, I mean, my phone does a pretty good job of correcting. Uh, I mean, that's the phone, shoes. but yeah, maybe my phone is overcorrecting. I don't know. But it's just a um, uh, what you call it? It's just a cheapo light box from Amazon. Cost me like fiver. Just so, go okay. it's in my car- kitchen because it's the best light that I have in the house. To be honest with you, I find if I use a bright light, it makes the models look terrible when they're photographed. Weirdly, contrary to. You know what, uh, Louise Sugden, who used to do photographs for Games Workshop, she's done a video on her YouTube channel on how I took videos for for um, Games Workshop, and it's been on my to playlist for like forever. And I'm like, I'm gonna have to get it out and actually look at it. But I was really I tend happy- to use a black black background. I think try to. Yeah, but it's a yeah, but no, the squad's nice. I like the squad. Mm. Uh, I don't know how often the. I mean, was as an interesting choice, but I suppose actually it's probably logical choice. Um, for, um, fists, two plus. Fists. Fists. Three I've already got uh, I've already got a last cannon squad and I was like okay cool uh, and they've got the um the the plus one to hit with the uh to to oh, yeah. bolt yeah. weapons bolt and weapons, yeah. and I'm like uh, uh and I've got the bits I've got most of the bits to do a an auto cannon squad at some point which I will get round to so cuz I'm just like they they work quite well fists as well so not volkai uh I don't know maybe I'm not I mean, yeah, get, get your point you can hit on twos but um Volkite's devastating. Like I got. I might, I might, I might, I might do Volkite at some point, but I probably will. But it's just I don't know when. Uh, mm-hmm. I need to buy myself some more. Um, I actually do have the Volkite weapons. Actually, I, I think I've just got to get I mean, some can't, Marines for can't it. You take or, the, um, ass- the auto cannons can- are useful because they can. They're super very good. Much. They're so good, and they're assault weapons, which I found out the other day as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously, they get the plus one with the Imperial fist as well. They would be my choice. Uh, but yes, I'm going to make the auto cannons. I've got some auto cannons. I've just got to grab a grab a s- squad from somewhere to build with them. And nice. yeah, they can I've do got... a number because they're rending as well, aren't they? Four shots each rending. Yes, they are. Ten of them, forty yeah. shots. A... And I might yeah, very yeah, something. Mm. Strength six. That'll do. That'll be great against dreadnoughts as well. I think they're a very good squad actually. And, um, yeah, maybe they'll come into yeah. heavy support squads are absolutely phenomenal. They are a bit too good, if I'm honest. Because um, they can do things that other things can't. Last cannon squads need to be more. Especially when you start chucking guys like Marshal Signals. Marshal Signals in and things like that. Mm. And, and an Armistos. Uh, yeah. Marshal Signals, I think, is a better choice now. I've, I've thought, thought about it. The Armistos is, is good, but you never really use him to shoot. You just use him for this thing, so you must get a Marshal Signals. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. Um, but I have got Armistos in two of my army, so I'm going to stick with that. I think people have started to sort of nerf that a little bit and it or sort of self manage that, let's say. Yeah. yeah. Cool. No, okay. It's a shame they can't do it with the last cannon squad, say. Eh? <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I won't lie. I've got, you know, they've only got I one think, last I, cannon squad. I think the horrors. thing with the last cannon squads is their points regulate them. I mean, they are still, I mean, the thing is, they're, though, like 10 man last cannon squad. For, no, no, 285 yeah. points for 10 man. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I suppose it is. It's not cheaper now. They are super cheap. And then if you think about a Sakaar and Arcus being 270, I'd rather have a 10-man last cannon squad. Yeah. Every day of the week. Yeah, it's going to so be more. Yeah, they. I mean, they really do pay their points. And yeah, they can uh, react. Last cannon squads need to be more expensive. Sorry, but they do. I think you're probably right. I mean, they're yeah, kind they of... They used to be. They used to be a little bit... You know, money. Tricksy. But yeah, I think... Yeah, I think it, it, it kind of also helped. It's the somebody that's to get, done it, really, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. it also kind of helped that the only way to get them uh, up a while back was as a resin set. Yeah, yeah, now you can you see them in yeah. there, don't you? I mean, I'm not going to say that that's good or bad thing, because I do use them, so I haven't really got any room to complain about them, to be fair. Oh, I use And they them. do make a big difference in my Sons of Horus army. I use them. Because it hasn't a really huge got... Huge difference. Think about Sons of Horus and why I'm so... I'm probably they're probably my favourite army to play at the moment, um, but they are they are super generic. I mean, I never use their special ability, 
because it's terrible. There's yep. their advanced reaction. So they're not overpowered rules wise, I feel. The look the rights of war are pretty naff. I've never used them. So they're kind of like a generic ish army, if you see what I mean. There's nothing the only thing is they're minus one to you know to your strength when you're fighting them in I mean, first back combat, in the first back round. in the first edition they were a bit generic. But you I could, think that's okay. But you could make something of them if you use their specific rights of war. Yeah. I think the fact that they're one of the tent pole legions yeah, yeah. is uh, they're kind of you know I'm, I'm loath to say this they're kind of the bad ultramarines in sort of 40k terms if that makes sense yeah whereas ultramarines are really good yeah and they are great yeah it? the ultramarines have a role but the ultramarines, ultramarines are, the, are, the, are the poster boys for 40k yeah and the fists and the sons of horus are the poster boys for heresy at least yeah. currently anyway mm, totally. and might change in the future so yeah it's good. they're kind of op- they're sort of perhaps you know that's a reason why they're generic so people get into them and then they're not uh, if bombarded you're against, with if you're going up against the imperial fists who have got you know that oh yeah syn- got synergy every, across every their tool rules, under the sun and yeah doesn't make them super super good um but yeah anyway what have I been up to? So I guess now you, we've dissected Mr. B's every sports squad. Uh, I played Horus, which was actually oh, yes, quite I fun. Thought, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't quite get his head quite right. The armour I quite enjoyed. I had to kind of mix up some colours to get his armour how I wanted it, which was always fun. Um, I think I used... I, I found it like a metallic green and I used... Was it um, the uh, new Horus or the old Horus? The old Horus. Ah. I OG Horus. Know. OG Horus. Yeah, not the new one. Um... I wanted to make that kind of dark green metallic armor. Oh yeah. There isn't really a dark green metallic color that you can get, so I had to kind of mix something up, which was good fun. Yeah, um, not, I don't think there is yet. I think um oh I'll have a look. You keep going. I'm just gonna check. I couldn't even find one from like, you know, um you know, scale seventy five or whatever. All the um, greens are very bright. What's so I had to I mixed it in with um Vallejo air gun metal. Because it's mm. dark, which is a dark black, and then used um just used uh, null oil going back to the Iron Warrior days, and then did an oil wash over it. So it looks okay. What? The only thing that I not that I did wrong was his head. Cause it's I don't know. I was trying to just couldn't get his head right, no matter how much I tried. It really bugged me, and it still bugs me now. So I might have to repaint his noggin. One day of do- one way of doing it, if you're wanting to go down the slightly uh, artisanal ways, would be to go. Uh, Silver, and green? No, silver and then uh yeah maybe uh yeah. thingy down watered down um uh the green that you want and then apply that in thin layers over it because then you'll still get the green and you'll still get the metallic underneath yeah but it's almost, yeah mr b might have a, well, i might try that mr b i mean i don't think i'm gonna do any more metallic greens it's just a horror to be honest with you mm. The Sons of Horus themselves are going to use the normal kind of green, but yeah, yeah. I just thought it was weird there isn't a dark metallic green color. And um, uh, you can see green stuff, well, do one. So. I was having a look because uh, uh, Duncan Rhodes is doing another wave of paints, and there's a metallic green there, but I think it's a, maybe a bit too bright. Yeah, the ones I've got are kind of more emeraldy green metallic. Yeah, I mean, they're nice, a bit, might be a bit just, just too bright. bright, but anyway, I'm pretty happy with him, and I've now got a um, a uh. I've I've got a kind of counter stand to Chris's shrine of of goodness. I have the shrine of evil now. So I've got Horus and I've got Perturabo. Oof. Uh, And I think I've got Alpharius knocking about, which I'll for a non-started project. So soon I will have my own shrine of evil to to, to pray to before an event, as opposed to Valdor, um, Dawn and Sanguinius. I still have uh, two of those light up cases <laughs> uh, light, that I uh, took from work before we had the refit kicking around. So uh, if you want one of those, I can always send one of those up to you. They've got a they're black box open sides, but they've got a LED light built into the mm, top. Yeah, of that sounds nice. Well, maybe when we're done, um, I can swap my PC for them. Oh, yeah, yeah we can we'll have a look. Okay, cool. So anyway, what else did I I also... Um, Built and painted the Colts Abonamimbo. Oh yeah, the evil assassin. Oh yeah, he's, yes, he's awesome. 
I've not played him yet. He's great to play, though. He was a really nice figure to paint. Really enjoyed painting him. Uh, nice and straightforward. Put them together in minutes and then went at him. Um, the master position I did the week before, or last time we talked about this. So, and then I was like, oh, I love painting these the corrupted units, but unfortunately I've got to get my head in the game for this event in April because I realised I haven't got enough tactical marines. Oh, so, yeah. And it was like, oh, bugger. So I had to kind of gird my loins and build and paint 10 um, Mark III. I had an old, the old Mark III, not a new Mark III. So I've got 10 of them. So I started on them and I've done 10 Mark VI because um, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to take a recon squad, but without Nemesis bolters. Gotcha. Mm. Um, just because they can then infiltrate uh, and hopefully get on an objective, and but they're not crazy points. Um, no, they are. So they get all the benefits, but you know, they don't have the, the obviously shooting power so i thought I can't, i'll give that a try maybe and so at least i can get onto objectives quickly um but i don't like obviously we know how much i like mark six heads so i bought some custom heads actually off it was you know one of these east eye t- style things so yeah, i've oh, got yeah. some custom heads they look pretty good um and i bought some um uh, uh well initially i bought some Sniper rifles. I thought I'd have, maybe you have five sniper rifles, five without, but they came with their like primaries one. So I didn't bother with that. I just put the um, I just put some uh, sights, you know, like the oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So I've just put them on the guns, just so they look a bit different from. So you can you can tell they're recon marines, not normal marines, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've painted them slightly differently with like black um shoulder pads, just so you know. Um, yeah, and I also did a little bit of work in the background for my um scene i bought some stuff from taro model maker made a model maker mm-hmm. for my atropos yeah, as you know my atropos i'm never going to use it because it's so terrible i think i actually bought that green stuff world one uh, i think i actually got that oh, um cheers. yeah um but what i've done is i've chopped part of his gun off and put on a big tentacle thing so I'm going to use him as that corrupted knight with the oh, tentacle nice. thing. So to replace the rubbish wall for the plasma cutter thing, which only gives him one attack. So at least he's going to get used rather than just sitting there doing nothing because mm. he's so terrible. As often so, yeah, in life, it's all about the tentacles. It's all about tentacles. So yeah, pretty busy. To so I've got, and also I started painting another Sakaran because I realised I need four for my army for April. Yay. I guess by the time we do this next time, we might be able to talk about our lists. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and that's me. Very nice. Sweet. Okay, awesome. Um, what about games played? Games played. I haven't played any because um, Lindsay's um, been doing this art thing on a Tuesday when I'd normally be going up to trying to go up to, to Durham to play a game and I haven't had a chance. And then. Um, been playing a, a 40k league in um uh hartlepool gamers so yeah. that's taken up all my time t- uh, my t- t- fridays and i'm like oh, i really need to play some heresy but it's just getting mm. it's just I getting know. to a place where heresy is going to be played I, I might have to just like say right I, I, i'll play it in the week i want to play heresy so and you good uh, I'm a in fact you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna message russell in a minute and see if he wants to play again okay play. very good uh what about you, surprise, Chris? I'm a week early for the recording for this one. Okay. So you have something next month. Yeah. Brilliant. The did we talk about your big game last time? Yes, we did talk about his big game. We did, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a bit, it was a bit, um, what was it? It was a bit hard because it, 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 it I'm, I'm putting words in your mouth, but it, you were mentioning about how it's that bit where you're standing around waiting for stuff to happen. Yeah, mm. it's, yeah, I yeah, it was fun, but yeah, it was. It's that problem. The problem with... that always it's always a problem with big games and tech. Just a lot of people should be having to make decisions, and you can't always get three the one person to watch two things at once. But anyway, that was. But yes, I shall recount you with the tale of my destruction of the Death Guard uh, this coming Monday in our our next joining. Yeah, I look forward to that. Yeah, or or <laughs> I shall recount the. Uh, accidental oh. leaving of the custodians of the train <laughs> as I'm sick of them <laughs> and their consistent uh, failure. Yeah, well, you know, 
Mr. Smith is, he takes zero prisoners. Indeed. Which is why he's a good person to pra- practice against. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, who have I played? So, I'm trying to think about last time. I did, I, I actually, I'm going to have to go very, very quickly look at the last show notes. I didn't. That's good. So, last time we talked about this, I was talking about the Christmas game. So, the last, so I've played a few games. I had a, a kind of like Rumble in the Jungle esque game against Wayne and Lorgar, the the kind of um the new the new demon okay. version. Mm. Um, I'm not Wayne. I hate, I hate Lorgar. Yeah, Fair it was it was it was uh, mm. it was interesting. So I I took the literally the filthiest list that I've ever put together in my in all of my years because I knew you know Wayne was like okay this list is unstoppable. You're not going to be able to stop it. It's it's it's, it's proper filth. And I was like, challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> and red, yeah. let me let me have this show you this red rag that I have, and yeah, yeah. Uh, let me wave it in your face. So he had. So this was obviously um, Empress Children. Uh, he had Lorgar with his Phoenix Guard. Yep. Trixie. Uh, he had a um, a couple of squads. He had two uh, Omegas couple of squads of um seekers some mm. normal kind of marines um i think another couple of shooting things but yeah long story short uh i was going to go first and he sees initiative and i thought oh, this is just bloody great because laura is going to be up in the grill so yeah i can i can um give you a very quick brief rundown once mm. i've sorted this dog that's on my lap out <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I've still got the list because it was pretty filthy. And I just want to kind of say to people, this isn't the, this is by this no is the means. the sort of thing he takes to everything he does. This is the sort of thing I'm going to take from every event going forward. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I think this was the list. Uh, let me just, uh, let me just have a look. Uh, what do we have? This sounds kind of right. Yeah, yeah. I think that sounds about right. So this is what I had. More no, one chaplain, just one yeah. chaplain. Um, Thunderhammer, um, shield, the um, Ultramarine shield. Okay. Yeah. One Contempt of Dreadnought with two plasma cannons. Of course. Fantastic choice. Right. Great choice. Yep. Hard to kill, hard to react to, and he will do a squad if you're yep. lucky. Then, of course, the obligatory Caesarean, right? Yeah, and I thought the, the, the grandma's favorite. Yeah, everybody's the family favorite. Everybody tunes in to watch these guys in mm-hmm. a in a land raider. And the the kind of thinking behind this was Why else? If, if worse comes to worst, I can just challenge Lorgar out and just feed him a Caesarean every turn. Just mm. chop 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 chop. Because they're yeah. they're characters, right? So they can yeah. just go challenge yeah, that's, that's if Lorgar and Lorgar has to, I think. Um, well, he doesn't have to accept challenge. I could have done it on the Phoenix card. Um, but yeah. Big lad. So, because they're not weapon skill six, if it's weapon skill six, he has to take it. It's uh, two Lorgar, not Fulgrim, yeah? Sorry, yeah, sorry. I'll keep. Why do I get these two confused? Just want so to make sure, because. Yeah, Lorgar transcends. Em- you're fighting Fulgrim. Emperor's children, yeah? Fulgrim, Fulgrim, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Fulgrim. You know the guy. I do, yeah. Um, uh, actually, I don't just see that. Oh, actually, it's a pretty bad list, but a worse list. Um, tactical squad, tactical squad, just there for basically scoring. Um, a tactical support squad with um, melter guns mm-hmm. again, just in case anything got a bit tasty. Uh, Arcus, two Arcuses, that's cannons, two Omegas, that's cannons, oh. three Vindicators, that's cannons. Casual, yeah. Actually, no, that isn't the list I took. I do bring it on. There was even worse okay. than that. That's the that's the fun list. That's that's, that's, that's my that's my um. Ooh, that's yeah. the uh, that's the list I'm taking to the. That's thing. the beginners list. That's yeah, the, yeah. I do apologise. That's the oh, you want a, you want to practice a trial game, do you? Yeah, yes, sure. this Come is on, the one. one. This is the one. Apologies. Ooh. So, Chaplin talked about Herald yeah. and Martial Armor with, with a Predator. That's what I took in yeah. HQs. Contempt of Dreadnought talked about the Caesarean. Yeah. So the Zarin were going to be fearless with the Herald and the Chaplain there to boost them. Yeah. So basically a proper Death Star. Uh, two Predators with the Melter Gun mm-hmm. things. Tactical squads, but I made them in Ducktie because I don't need them to be compulsory oh. because the Predators are compulsory. So that gave them, um, that gives them the old inexorable rule. 
And I could also put melter guns in there because that's another thing that you can do with the um, inductide for the yeah, ultramarines. Yeah, nice. Put them in rhinos. And then again, that, that classic lineup, two arcuses, two omegas, three mm-hmm. vindicators. Right. And basically what happened is he got the first turn, came at me, I lost a few bits and pieces, and then I literally just <laughs> <and> just, <laughs> just ripped him out. Just gun-lined him. Just gun-lined him. And it was like starting at one end, and then everything just went wall up into Ooh. the um Phoenix Guard just, disappeared yeah. in a in a in a in a red mist and then every everybody just tucked into full guard to um Fulgrim. Full, Fulgrim. And there's nothing you can do, right? There was just so much high strength, low AP stuff. Yeah. He, he just couldn't dodge it enough. And then it was just a question of mopping the rest of it up because I'd already banged through a thousand points of his stuff and not lost anything like that. It's just nice yeah. the casual reenactment of Agin Corp. It was it was it's literally <laughs> and because of course with the Ultramarines everything that was shooting at them was getting plus one to the ballistic skill because I kept them within six inches. The models were within six inches of each other. So, so it was basically hitting on the event in April. Uh... <laughs> it won't be that, I tell you now. That was literally, I mean, it was there, a okay. horrific, there horrific are, gun. As line. I said, one month and six days between now and then. Yeah. You can play at least five, six games in that time, by which yeah. point, the date of which this had to go in, <laughs> you will be rabid with rage i mean no i'm taking it i'm just gonna take it so i'm not taking that list i'm not taking it it was it was embarrassing <laughs> Bad. yeah it was uh yeah genuinely uh embarrassing uh, so yeah but you gotta do these things yeah i mean it was a challenge for sure and, and, yeah. and he, in, we both were consenting adults if you like yeah, you knew what you yeah, you knew what you signed up for. He yeah, it was it. it was proper gun line, like old school gun line. Because I knew that I had to kill him in that turn. Because if yeah. he got if he got up close and personal, I was done. yeah. That's it. Yeah, game, I could not let could not let him um, be alive after turn one, and that's it was just <laughs> everything. Just... Yeah, it just melted everything. It was just a horrifically strong squad. But yeah, not the sort of arm, not a friends list. But I mean, it was unbelievably tough um but anyway it was good fun i've got to say i think wayne thought it was good fun and i think he thought actually maybe there's a way that i could have done this better or gave him something to think about yeah uh, for his list as well um so then things got turned down a little bit uh, i played uh, dan salamanders as the sons of horus and they gave me a proper spanking uh, crusher so, crusher dan yeah he's but the thing is since the v2's come along his, uh, his, his ratio of, of victories has, has dropped right off. And in fact, the last hey, couple look, of times I've beaten Forms so. temporary, class is permanent. And there you go. <laughs> Crusher. Crusher, Crusher, Dan. Crusher will be back. And he, and he had a, a pretty handy list, actually, with Salamanders. And it was it was tough going for me to get through him. He fairly well rinsed me with, some, with lots of Volkites. So, yeah. Um, week after that, I played Andrew's word bearers and i took my salamanders so i thought oh yeah maybe i should dig them out um which was quite good fun um good good fun game that one you know more um because still sort of teaching andrew these um the rules and then f- final game was a, a a sort of one that, that had been a long time coming it was against richard's imperial fists and richard is a very good player local um, and he's got a good fist army but he's one of these players who's really good at the game um but he's also a really nice guy to play mm. okay. so yeah, definitely. Um, so really knows the stuff. Uh, really good sort of tactically. N- lots of thought went into this game, but um, I, I think I might have won that one. I think I just managed to sort of out shoot him in some bits and pieces, and because he had a lot of land raiders, I had a lot of shooting, and um, that was that was how it all went basically. But it was a, one of those really cool games. I always seem to have good games against Imperial Fists. Because um, they are a proper challenge, so you've got to think about what you're doing. But equally, there was a lot of times. Unless they're paying me. Well, it was interesting because there were a lot of times when he was trying to trap me with his advanced reaction. Gotcha. So it, it was like, oh, I'm going to leave this little thing dangling out just here. And I know that you're going to. Little nugget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to charge you to stop you. And I was just like, yeah, I'm not falling for that yeah. shenanigans. So I'm just not going to yeah. move. You got the impulse control. This man did not. <laughs> So, but yeah, again, that's a sort of, you know, playing that reaction game is really cool. And again, a lot of thought into it. Um, but I really enjoyed those, all of those games that I had uh, in the last month. So yeah, Salamanders actually are better than I thought um, in certain certain ways. Um, but again, they're kind of fairly generic. They're, they're kind of, house rules aren't great. 
um, in comparison to some of the other legions, but they're still, you know, um, yeah, the pirate, whatever they're called. Oh, what are they called? The fire drakes pyromancers. are still fire drakes, and they're not pyromancers, but they, I can't remember what they're called. They're a special unit. D&D thing. Uh, oh, um, mm. pyroclasts. Pyroclasts, that's it. Yeah, yeah I mean, they're, they're still a handy unit. You know, two plus armor save, and they've got melter guns, um, or bits, you know, so melter guns and flamers, so they're, they're, no, they're no slouches. Um, but yeah, good fun, good fun games. Yes. Yeah, and that was me. Mm-hmm. All right. Next, next up. So next month's commitments. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to be trying to um, get got some boarding action terrain, and I want to try and get that um, painted up. Okay. Um, for, that's just to add to my um, zone mortalis, and I've got to decide: am I going to get a mat to finish it off, or the because um, the boards, the, the you know the tiles, they're now like. What is it again? Uh, 45 quid each. So that's 90 gotcha. quid. Now I've got two sets and it's like 90 quid to finish them off. But I could get a map for like 60. Yeah. And, and it's I'm like, easier to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's easier to move around and less heavy and doesn't need painting. So it's like, but the tiles are really cool. So it's just going to make a decision. Do I spend 60 quid on mat or 90 quid on tiles? I mean, yeah, I'll get them a bit cheaper at, um, um anyway, element, yeah. but. Not much cheaper, so got you. Okay. It's just a sort of like, yeah, what do I do? Annoying. Anyway, but that's that's that. I want to get the boarding action terrain done because that'll be a huge portion of the um thing done. Nice. Cool. Super cool. Uh I'm not gonna make any commitments because I'm just gonna finish off what I've done and then everything will just go back into hibernation. Very good. Um yeah, I've got a load of ultramarines to paint, so I'm gonna be on that. And then I'll hopefully, I've got another event, um, a one day three game narrative event in May at Heaton, actually. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, um, not, not a tournament. It's very much yeah. a, um, so don't take two dreadnoughts. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, so yeah, that's, that's sensible. 2,000 points, three games. So looking forward to that. Teddy's um, running it. Um, so that should be quite cool. Um, but I'm going to take my corrupted sons of Horus with that, so I need to get a decimator done, and at least and one um, hell brute esque uh, corrupted dreadnought. So yeah, nice. should be all, all cool. Yeah, I fancied it, but I, I, I can't commit to anything at the minute. So you know, yeah, stuff. no worries. All right, cool, lovely. Okay, uh, cool. right, state of the union indeed oh, not that, not that little jingle could be state of the union mm. next up we have the state of the union where we have a look around the globe uh, and beyond sometimes and uh, see what things are going on that are tangentially related mm. to the world of heresy so yeah um all sorts of news and carry on and meta if you will uh, yeah. that we can talk about so why don't we get the ball rolling mr b um yeah so let's get out this out of the way the end and the death volume free pre-order yeah. for the limited yeah. editions was a absolute mess to be blunt i mean we know scalpers scooped up massive numbers of the books huge numbers for pre-order to cancel and another pre-order went up which was just as messy was it yeah that's it um because i thought they cancelled they cancelled if you ordered more than one didn't they yes but apparently there are some wonderful bots out there and stuff i mean people were sharing stuff from discords and twitters of uh of people who were like using these bots to scoop up these limited editions and as i said i've said it before it's not something that's limited to warhammer it's something if you, if something is limited scalpers I mean, are going to go people will now try and make money i mean all the, right? when the ps5s came out you know yep ps5s graphics card xboxes uh trainers apparently even yeah, yeah switches yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, all, the, yeah. all sorts and i think it's yeah the problem is that it's you know what do we do about it because obviously in today's e-commerce world um how do you get around? Because if you want to buy something and people think they can artificially create a market by limiting the supply of it, which is yep. what they're kind of doing, mm-hmm. um, and then 
basically charging more for basically what, what? having a better bot. That's. I mean, for my personal, yeah, it's making these, money for doing nothing fundamentally, isn't it? I mean, my the attraction. My personal belief for these books is the limited edition. They should do a limited edition and a collector's edition. The collector's edition, unsigned, unnumbered, made to order, whatever. And then and the collector's edition with the signed stuff, maybe just do them in stores or whatever. Because I think that's there's, there's not a lot of ways around it. I think you've got to do something. I suppose the only problem with that is availability of stores if you're in a place like the states it's a or, it's a tough one but i don't know how uh, you would just uh, there's, there's there's no real way you know you can't stop it yeah it's like uh, it's, it's like it's like um you know the the investment that goes into cheating in games right you know no, yeah, no because know. people make money from it you know they'll basically sell cheats um yeah. and it's the same thing here like if you can say okay i'm really charge you thirty dollars or whatever to use my set of bots which will you know fake your name and all the rest of it and give you these things and then you make two or three hundred dollars from yeah. then selling them on because people unfortunately will buy it in fact the only way you stop this is getting people not to buy them from ebay mm-hmm. yeah. but that's not going to happen right because yeah, people yeah. want the they want what they want yeah. Spe- speaking of cheese i know this is a tangent but did you uh do, no, do you guys know, know the game um escape from tarkov yeah I'm, yeah Oh, the cheating that was in there was crazy. There's a great video on it that someone did, and it's like there's something where you can basically see right across the map. Yeah, and there well, was a way of telling if other people were cheating, and it was just like, oh my god, that was hilarious. But okay. anyways, I I went to a talk. I'm going to be as careful as I can without letting you get anything on here. Um, about a particular game that was released and the kind of escalating things that they had to go to to prevent cheating um which it was from somebody who makes games was utterly terrifying because the hey, look, those uh, those new pokemon games are well you I mean, people would cheat anything basically mm. is is the i mean if you look at things like fall guys which you think doesn't really matter yeah no, they've got yeah, cheating, cheating at fall guys everybody was cheating at fall Jeez, guys fall, yeah. fall guys is one of the most cheated games I mean, people will just teleport to the other end of the map and then because they want to be on the top of the leaderboard. So every time you put a leaderboard in a game, uh, you're effectively setting a red flag for a red rag rather to cheaters. Because somebody wants to be at the top of that leaderboard and they want to do it in the fairest way. So they haven't got the skills to take it off. But yeah, a particular game that um, I've, got, I've heard a talk on, but it was utterly terrifying. The, you know, and the lengths that people would go to mm. are because people make money from it, right? They sell. Yeah, they sell the cheats. Tech, they sell the box. They yeah, they sell the cheats. And it's the same thing with this. It's the same thing with this. I, I don't know what Game Workshop can do with it uh, other than, you know, do a run, a made to order run of an unsigned, unnumbered version. Because that's, I what, pe- I mean, I think that's you, what people are bothered about. Having could the- you bring in that kind of tech? I suppose the problem with, because thinking about, you know, things like Glastonbury, which have kind of got around ticket scalpers, haven't they? But I yeah, think but a lot of that is down to they put your photo on the ticket now. Yeah. I and half the way, are, you have to take the bus. The only yeah. way you could do, I think, the only way you could potentially do it is the because it used is basically the password, you know, the the account details. Everyone's got at least three pass, three email addresses these days. I think the only way you could really get around it is by saying that payment method has been used. You know, a card ending that number. Has already mm. been used to make that order, because people are less likely to have multiple mm. bank cards than they are. Um, yes, yeah, so, I mean you might have a credit card or a debit card, which yeah, yeah it's just but, how how long do they hold that data for? And if that that's a, that's getting into it, I don't know if what the rules yeah, are. I mean, the the solution GDPR, 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 yeah, GDPR's workshop even see the card number as it were. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, I suppose uh, probably because if they have to do a refund on or anything, that refund gets applied back onto the card. Yeah. So they have to retain that data for that possibly to happen in that transaction. Mm, okay. Because that's why you get a, when you do a card transaction anywhere, the mm. customer copy has all the card details blanked out apart from the last four numbers, but the merchant copy will have the full card number and yeah. it will have the I mean, well, expiry we do, date. So well, we if sh- they have to do a refund on that card, 
they don't yeah. necessarily need the card in person to do it. So I mean, because when we use Stripe, we don't get to see the card number. Yeah. Yeah. Third, third party now, isn't it? Yeah, I see yeah. what you mean. I mean, I think, I don't know what the solution is. I mean, they've tried all sorts of things, limiting queues, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, it, it's every time. And the, the, maybe the solution is not to have anything limited. The bots just, are always one yeah. step ahead. They always will be, right? Because they, I mean, for most thing, of the thing about like bots and hackers and cheaters is they only need to get it right once. You see what I mean? But yeah. they can try a thousand times. Whereas if you, all you need to do is get it wrong once and you're, you're buggered. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I know the Solar Ox set, uh, some people were very upset that it was sold out. I mean, it's actually still available. Quite a few have appeared. So that's, that's not too bad. Mm. But um, all that stuff, it's going to be available, uh, uh, you know, in the future, just slightly more expensive in individual boxes. Yeah. But, and I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, okay, you know, and it's, I think it's if there's a demand, if people want to, if somebody then bought that box set and then sold it on eBay for extra money, when in reality you could buy all the components for less, mm. <laughs> then it makes no sense. I suppose, right? yeah, it's, I suppose the circumstances are, you know, although it might turn up on eBay a week later after you place the order, someone's personal circumstance might have changed. They might be like, they might have gone, oh. they might think, oh, actually, I can just sell that. I can get the money back that I spent on it. Yeah, of that's course. the thing. And, and yeah, so that, you know, it's, Course, like if you, you look at, then you have a look at some of the accounts and you look at their selling history and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, all the, everyone's going to be. I mean, I guess a lot of people sort of buy three, sell two to pay for the third one, which they yeah, get for nothing at that point. Yeah. yeah. All right. So okay. I think we covered that. I don't think we yeah. can talk about that for hours. So <laughs> I don't think there's, I don't think there's a solution currently. The... At least not one that we can think of because we're not the... that bright. Unless you started using biometrics. Which would which would mean you'd have to Oh, that's definitely going into some interesting GDPR territory, yeah, isn't it? But then you'd have to use a fingerprint. You can only use a fingerprint once, right? And also how would you confirm that upon delivery? Mm. I don't know. Um greater minds than ours are probably working on this as we Because there are like I mean Amazon, for instance, do you can if it's an age restricted item, when it's delivered, they will ask you for the passcode. Yeah, that links to that package and stuff like that. Mm, okay. Or even um, if it's an it's an expensive item. Yeah, yeah, it has a for, it has a code that's individual to that parcel. Oh, do they? And do they? I'm not um, I've had it on a couple of bits and bobs. Yeah, and long. then you yeah, have to tell you have to expensive items. That's it. Yeah, you have to give keep that give that to the delivery Amazon card. delivery person yeah. when they come to deliver it. Otherwise, they won't hand over to you. I'm not, I think what was the oh, it also stops porch pirates and the like as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Not that well, that really is an issue yeah. here. Well, are you not just picking them up as you walk along? Because, well, I, I've never seen anyone um, leave stuff. Yeah, we're not. I'm, su- I'm not surprised it's not happened where I am because I've had Amazon parcels left out the front door and. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I just yeah, it was at Christmas. One of Annie's Christmas presents was left outside. Uh, just on the in- luckily, just on the inside of the of the gate. I mean, we've we've had but a couple of things. We've had a couple of things from um, Hermes that they just put behind the door, the wall in front of our house, so you can't really see it from the street. Yeah, I mean, we've got a porch, so we can they can actually put it in yeah. the porch before they get to the front door, which is super handy. Yeah. You can't then see in to see what's been delivered. But yeah, you know, like in America, where they kind of just leave things on the literally on the porch, and it's like, yeah, who's, people are just going to nick that. I mean, nobody's not yeah. going to nick that. I mean, it's just asking for trouble. We see it in the on those like. The, so many videos on YouTube of people just driving around, basically. Yeah. It was a, um, there the was a thing guy I, in... I was just thinking, the last thing I actually had was a, uh, a spray can of um, Colourforge silver spray. Yeah. Um, that was it. I had a I had a code for that. But as I suppose me. that's probably because it's um, spray paint. <laughs> as, <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a counter to the uh, uh, porch pirate thing, a delivery, Amazon delivery driver in Hove dumped a load of parcels because he wasn't going to finish his round. Uh, a guy found them and then he delivered them all because he was, it was at Christmas time and he What's thought there, nice might be, there might be kids' Christmas presents and stuff. So he drove What's around personally delivering all these Amazon parcels. Now that's, that's the what driver you want. That's a chap. Uh, I can't believe he would have just dumped those parcels like. Yeah, I, yeah. I can. Yeah, uh, yeah, cool. All right. I've, 
try and find the story and I'll send it to you. Okay, yeah. right. So um I was gonna say move it on, but Chris has got the next bit and he's just searching up something. Oh, there we go. Uh Oh, there you go. Nice bit of filler music for you. Uh, mm. The Blood Angels are getting Thank you to a, your new game show. It's, it's, it could well be. No spoilers. Uh, are getting a, the Blood Angels are getting a weapons upgrade set with custom bolters, Inferno pistols, and the uh, Elastis assault cannon. How many are you getting in there? Box or packet plus four perdition weapons, which is a spear, axe, sword, and mace. I haven't actually looked at what perdition weapons do in this version. I must. I should do that short. It's no. just the one assault cannon. It is just the one. Just the cannon. one assault cannon. That's not so... too bad though, because you can buy the normal assault cannon. No one's going to bat an eyelid. Hey, there's a DI do-it-yourself um, Morat out there with those two pistols because they're left and right-handed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean, nice. Yeah. There's plenty of options there. I mean, it's not that bad. Um, Why just three cool. bolters? That seems weird. Yeah, it's just. I think it's just a little bit of variety. Yeah, I don't. Uh, there's nothing there I'm particularly fussed about. The spear's pretty cool. This race, uh, well, look, you know, it's me, a spear. I love us. I love a spear. Um, yeah, I would yeah, probably that's... buy that purely for the melter pistols. Yeah, that's basically. kind of because trying to find basically. the left and right handed ones of those are going to be mm. uh, not easy. Uh, not easy. Yeah. Yeah. So you have got your melter pistols there. What are you going to do with that arm? Eh. Yeah. Not a bad set. I mean, you couldn't. No. Have, I mean, how much is it going for? Does it don't know. We don't know. Yeah, well, well, if it's like the other one, it'd be twenty-one pounds, wouldn't it? It's not out yet. Okay. That's the, not other, bad. Well, the other upgrade kit from earlier on in the. That's a plastic one, though. I think it's going to be more like the Sons of Horus one. So if I have a look, how uh, much okay. Sons of Horus one is. Um, if you give me a second, I'll. Just... That Angel's Predator upgrade as well is nice. Yeah, with the uh, Oh yeah, the, the, that is that is brilliant. I'm surprised they didn't do them on the side sponsors as well. Yeah, that's that what I was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Because you could have, you could have, uh, yeah, you could have like, well, yeah. you can take one as a heavy bolt, so you can take one on the pin on the pimple mount, take yeah. one as a main gun, and take two on the spot on the side sponsors. That's flipping monstrous. Uh, if they can take a, I mean, if they can take a flamer, I think. Yeah. On the sponsors, then yeah, yes. you can still take it. You just don't have a model for it necessarily. Mm. Yeah, I'm just trying to see. Uh, no, no, that's a Catafranchi kit. I'm just having a look at. Uh, here we go. Armory of the Sons of Horrors, twenty three pounds. That oh, one yeah. comes with um, four bane strikes, four normal bolters, and a bunch of axes and arms. So it might be a bit more in the in the uh, Blood Angels kit. I'm not sure. The Blood Angels kit's infinitesimately better. Yeah, I do not also, like the model they've used to. Uh, put the Elastis Cannon on, on the article. He looks dull AF, I believe is the... I was thinking how how, how cool he looks. Are you? What with his... He's all, he's all his, right. His spike helm and... I quite like that. It's good yeah. look. Yeah, but I, I do like the 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 Predator, the Baal Predator. I can see that um, being used in 40, for 40k players as well to get a slightly nicer looking Baal Predator. Well, tough. They can't have it. Be off with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Now we... thinking about an armored spearhead with bold predators. <laughs> you know you want to. I do now. I totally do. Do it. Hey, that's my Just a third sp- project down the line. cannon all the way. That'd be so cool. That would, wouldn't be cool. It'd be horrible. But it would be cool. Hey, look. Take some angels. <laughs> uh, take some angels. Here's as yeah, your kind of, uh, uh, elite choice. Kind of, um, and then that. you can just do literally all the assault cannons. yeah. I'm just until well, hopefully somebody will come up with a side sponsored version of the assault cannon. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of doing that Deadpool thing there with like, no, that's terrible. No, it's really good. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So uh, yeah, so what's what's next, Graham? Uh, good question. What is next? What's the frequency, Kenneth? Um, deep cut, deep cut slash no cut studios. Couple of new battle mats. Just perfect for the hair. Of course, they're just perfect for the heresy. One for 28 and one for 8 mil. So let's have a look at the 28 mil one first. Let's get the big boy. Oh, no cut studios. You've, you're teasing us again. Look at that. Moonscape. It does look pretty cool, to be fair. Oh, it's a battleground. That looks great, doesn't it? Yeah. Damn you, Klopotkin. I just... Here's the thing. I was thinking about this the other day. 
I miss 3D game tables. I know why people don't like them, because your dice end up going everywhere, your models fall yep. over. Yep. Yeah. They have their downsides. They do. But and they're horrible plasticky things. The, the dice will rattle off at a thousand yeah. miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. That's what dice trays were invented for. Mm, they're true. But there is something quite nice about putting a model in a hole. There or is. Or actually having the high ground mm. that he's standing on. I think... I have the high ground, Anakin. Exactly. Um, I, I, have I, don't, a... I don't have a problem with mats. I just... I just miss that um, yeah. contextualization. Yeah. I, I've got a um, Realm of Battle board, the you know the, mm. the tile one. I've got eight tiles for some reason. I've got two extra flat tiles. I'm not sure how that happened, but um, yeah, I I, I I I just don't get it out because it's plumb. It's a pain. Can. It's a yeah, pain. I, the, the 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 things go everywhere. It's, it's I, lovely. I'm a, it's great, but it's just... I'm an analogue man living in a digital printing world. That's what it's, it is. It's, it's, um, it's too much. It's too much hassle. But just, you know... I just... The thing is, you go to... You know, it's always the thing. You go to Forge World, we go to Warhammer World, you want to play on one of the cool mat tables because it's a cool table. Mm. Because it's got all the bells and whistles on it. I think if I had the table set but, up permanently different story it's just that weird mindset you don't want to play on it generally but the dream is to play on if that, i have that ball if that makes sense if i could have it set up permanently yeah i would but I, i'd play it all the time but it's i've got to get it out put it away and i'm just you know as i said analog band no i get i totally get it i totally get it it's just as I say, it's just a pain in the bum to put away all the time. <laughs> it's a pain in the bum to get out. Uh, I mean, it'd be much easier on the table I have now, but yeah, I can't yeah. have I can't have the table out all the time because and, and people apparently want to work in here. That's not just me. Oh, fair enough. Anyway, my gripes gripes over. No, I said it's a valid gripe. Uh, what's up next, Mister B? Uh, what we got now? Okay, Solar Auxilia, the Army of the Oligarchs. I spoke about earlier. First wave of the battle group for twenty. Can we call them that anymore? No, no they're the common. The, we're, we're, the, it's changing the whole of the her, uh, of heresy. You know, we've had the we've lost the car and sail scale. That we, you know, the Army of the Oligarchs is going. But mm. well, that's that's a question later. So we've got. So the box has your twenty-five infantrymen, a Lehman Russ, a Dracosan, a Dracosan. Is it Dracosan or Dracosan? Mm. I guess Dracosan. A lot of Graham's answer was yeah. yes. To no. a Athian <laughs> Heavy Sentinel. And that's not all that's coming. We're also getting, because this came from the Las Vegas Open, a Velatara Storm Section with Volkite Culverins. I don't know if they're going to come with the axes, though. Although, yeah, there's the no axes, idea. Draco Dracosan. So it's Dracosan, unfortunately. I always call them Dracosians because of the word Dracosian. Apparently, the um, axes are quite good. But I don't know. I haven't looked at it. Uh, we're getting the Lehman Russ Assault Tank, which has Demolisher Cannon, Volkite Macro Saker, and Executioner Plasma Cannon. Um, and uh, no Solar Auxilia Force will be complete without the Malkador and all of the other options. Um, other than the Defender, funnily enough. No Defender option, but it's got everything else. Okay. We haven't, we haven't had a model for Malkador yet, have we? Anyway. Yeah, but we've got a new, uh, new, new big plastic, and it's, it's looking good. It's looking good. I mean, uh, just looking at the that i mean the but there's the i mean we we, we will talk about the uh, there's a bit coming up with the infantry but yeah no it all looks good and that as i said the malkador with all those options is very nice uh what are the axes that they can take the solar auxiliary yeah apparently someone was saying the axes are absolutely fantastic really straight three axes i don't know i don't it's know the <laughs> i don't know i haven't looked up the rules yet Let's do it right now. Uh, let's let's do it. This I'm, to bed. I'm having a look. You go on to the next bit, and I'll try and find them in the in the meantime. Okay. Uh, once so I what, found what's out. What's the next bit? Okay. Well, I'll do the next bit because it's just basically more solar auxiliary. And look, there's a bit of solar auxiliary in here. There's another new model, uh, the Hermes Light Sentinel. So hopefully a bit more reliable than the delivery company. 
uh, shares its name. It's a stink. It's a it's a storm. Stinky. It's a it's a dinky little um uh, uh, stripped down sentinel with a multi laser or grenade launcher. Um, and it looks all right. I suppose we'll just see what that grenade launcher does. I don't know how good a multi laser is going to be. Um, but they also got a Volataris version of it. Um, the um. Uh, which is uh, the, oh, what's it called? Uh, it's got a slightly different name here, and I'll put it down. Um, about Incursus pattern for the Velotaris with a Volkite weapon or a Heavy Flamer. And then we get ranged artillery too, Basilic and, Mes- and Medusa, which basically is a, almost identical to the Fordwell kit. Nice. It's totally plastic. And it looks, just from these photos, I'm going to take a, I think they'll be magnetizable. Uh, uh, so. or just even pop in and pop out with friction so i think that should be relatively easy just looking at that um, um look- storm axes is, is absolute God. chaff i mean okay. they are better than a power axe but that's not a very high bar to go across mm. kind of oh, so strength, strength plus two yeah giving them strength five mm-hmm. it is ap2 though so mm. however it and is unwieldy axe. So, um, and two handed, and two handed, so you're never going to get an extra attack. Uh, but does have murderous strike six plus? Mm, I, These not things aren't terrible, but blessed with thousands uh, of attacks. Lose an attack, you're yeah. going last, make going open to sixes. Not I mean, terrible, but not great. Side of Zillia are not great in close combat. You want to well, use your I, 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 I would not be going for a close combat squad. Um, I was just uh, play to their strengths. The, the, close the, combat uh, is not it. The interior of the Basilic and the Medusa is fully modelled. Fair so enough. Why I don't know. Because never going to see the eyes. <laughs> never going to. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Sorry. I'm <laughs> not going to paint inside the doors. Staying. Blew the those doors out. Yes. Yes. It is. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's quite cool. All right. So Graham, do you want to? Uh, so it could. Oh no, send it to Prime. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, they still Max is getting the bin. Okay. Yep. Not bad. Just, just, just not great for going last. I mean, the command section's bad because they can all take power weapons, but yeah. Um, still Max is. Just, I mean, just, can they all take them? Or is it just. Yeah, oh, yeah they, anyone can. Anyone can. Well, I suppose for five points, but again, you're probably not playing to your strengths. Their base attacks is one. Yeah. I think so I'd rather. Yeah, it's I one think attack. I'd, I think I'd rather charge. have the bulk kite then. I'd rather take. I'd rather oh, take. Yeah. Power, but, well, you can't take yeah. axes, but yeah, bulk kite would be probably Rob better Talibans. just by, by just by sheer dint of volume of fire. But anyway, um, so we got a great look at the auxiliary or solidly infantry sprues. Two of them, both the las rifle section and the command section, plus the command upgrade sprue, has an extra auxiliary captain. Yeah, yeah. There's a legit, legit marshal. Yeah, you've got the basically there's a five man sprue, and that builds all the infantry that's in the current box, including the command section. And they've got a little sprue of upgrades, which has got all the power weapons, the needle pistol. Apparently, it's got all the options that a command section can take. Nice. Uh, plus an extra body, which you can build as a captain or legate marshal. And they're like, so it's actually instead of twenty five infantry, it's actually twenty six. So you get a sneaky little sixth guy. I, I mean, I don't hate solar rocks. I'm, the, even though they're plastic now, I'm not more convinced that I need to play a solar rocks army. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got one. They just, it's just they take a long time to play. They look they cool. Fun, I mean, they look. It's, no, so I, I, I'm mass more, infantry armies always look good on the board. I, I'm more interested in them as a allied detachment right now. Well, you can feed them to your word bearers as a. Um, <laughs> they are quite good. They? They, are, they are quite good fun though. We'll set up one. They are, yeah. you know, and they're they not going to steam or anything, but they are quite good fun. They look fun to paint. But yeah, yeah so. Yeah, so the so the basic sprue has all the command options on it. Two, uh, you know, you have got your Vexelia, your your Pal, your your Charnable Saber, and your yeah, it, it's got everything there for everything. And then in your box caster, and then the command sprue has just got the better versions of that further. So it's it is interesting. It's it's, it's an interesting way to bring it. Very similar to the current 
Astarte sprue where it's one sprue that covers most of the anyway gotcha all right so uh and then we got as chris was asking about earlier the rules for the atheon heavy sentinel um oh, i didn't put a direct link to the rules just to the article um okay so it's it mm-hmm. there so we've got the um it's yeah it looks pretty good i think a lot of people were confused about the fact that the war gear was an atheon heavy sentinel and it's like it kind of explains at the bottom that that the, the unit is a couple of Atheon heavy sentinels and it's yeah it's not the best explained yeah oh, okay yeah. gotcha gotcha yeah, yeah. so it's composed yeah. of one the war gear is it is that right. is it yeah <laughs> um yeah and it comes based with a multi laser which you can replace with an auto cannon volkite las cannon heavy incinerator or my favorite the melter lance but having seen uh, the models in the shop that is super easy you can lift that out and put it back in all the weapons come fully you know basically come as a thing sure. so you can pop it pop take it and pop out no problem easy and the uh, missiles which come with the hunter kiss it can be magnetized to take hunter killer missiles instead so it's a really super easy to kit like that apparently uh, uh, from what i can see so strength six, seven, so seven to six, five wounds, two for save. Okay, so I'll take a little bit to. Yeah, it's like yeah, a, right. it's it's like a Castaferon. Mm. Castaferon, whatever. Dreadnought, strength six, toughness six, two plus wounds. The only problem is, of course, weapon skill and British skill are three. Three, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I started saying about the um, uh, heavy incinerator. This is a template weapon, so I've got a roll to. Yeah. Oh, strength six AP four. It's not bad as well. Yeah. I be I would be and torrent six plus. That's a twelve. I'm inch range effectively with the. It's, it's that's going to be the time plate. That's going to be all right at dealing with a lot of stuff, but I'd definitely be tempted with the melter lance. The problem is the melter lance is a one shot, and you're on ballistic skill three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it's uniquely it, half that range to use the armor bank so you've got within within nine. nine inches yeah which is it's not as good as a multi-melter and a multi-melter is a twin link now aren't they anything you put it against yeah. is it's a melter is either going to punch it or shoot it with some nurse cannons in return i don't think you're the, better um, off i would think taking the incinerator and just flaming infantry with it yeah i don't think the auto cannon's a bad shot either but again, it's four shots on the also lack, lack of um, yeah rerolls mean you you it will be a miserable time. Yeah, and seventy points isn't too bad. That is true, though. Seventy points is not terrible. But I suppose once you buff it up, you're probably looking yeah, at hundred. I mean, yeah, weapons, and then, right. We've if got you them. Care, it's it's weapons, it's like, who not take a multi. Who's going to take a multi laser? I mean, yeah. And then we've got the mechanized subtype. I'd probably you? you know I'd probably take the Volkite Cauldron. Just because yeah. it's more shots and there's a chance you might hit with three of them. Possibly. What about the Atheon heavy missiles? What do you think of those? Again, they're kind of much for much, aren't they? Yeah. Strength I mean, AP5. I mean, big range, which is good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a, a Volkite Culverin's 45, isn't it? But what would you rather take? The missile battery with uh, all the hunter killers? I'd take the missile battery, twin linked. Mm-hmm. Um, hunter killers are one shot. Yeah, barrage is useful. <laughs> yeah, I'd take the, the the missile battery and uh, as many heavy incinerators as I can fit on her. Okay, cool. And then we got probably, I would probably go Volkite on this one, you know, yeah. just because that'd be 10 shots. Fair enough. But as I said, the model allows you to swap out. Them, so we can it's only... Can you take... Is a normal culver in 10 shots? No, a Volkite culver is five. You can take two of them, can't you? No, you no, can't take just one. one. Must one. Just got one uh, on the top. Yeah. I do, do beg your pardon. You don't have, you don't have the uh, right. juicy arms. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, is that what it's got? One weapon? It's got, uh, it's got one... the, the, batter, the missile battery on the sides, and then on top, it's got the one big weapon. Let's see, sorry, I misunderstood that. No, it's just. It, uh, in my, as I said earlier, in my head, I want to put arms on it. Yeah. Just to give it a, you know. Mm-hmm. Right, so basically Something. his main me- weapon is the Atheron missile battery, which is a twin-linked large blast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, or you it's not yeah, terrifying, it? I'll be honest, it's not in my list for no. the, to initially to try out, so, because I, I can take a Lehman Russ. 
in yeah, the same I mean, spot. Yeah, heavy support choice. Yeah. As an yeah, ally. That's mad. I mean, as an elite choice. Okay. But what maybe, about well, mechanized unit types? I, mean, I don't yeah. think we've ha- I don't think we've seen that before, have we? Mechanized unit type. Uh, no, it's new. So what we've got it, here. Successful it was in the rules though. Poisoned or flesh bane rules must be re-rolled against it. Failed to wound mail rolls made for armors with a armor bane. Uh, and against a unit includes must be re-rolled. Fa- made for units, not weapons with a fail to wound rules. Against the unit with this unit subtype. All right, so must be re-rolled. So yeah, if you basically hit if you with fail a flesh bane, a, if yeah, you fail you fail with an armor bane. No, if you if you basically roll to wound it on a yeah. three plus because you've got flesh bane, yeah, you have to re-roll it. Right. Okay. And then the second one, which is armor bane, uh, fail to wound rolls. Okay. So armor. So it's more vulnerable to armor bane. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, no. mod- yeah, fail oh, to yeah, wound roll. Yeah. Yeah. A model with the mechanized uh, unit subtype. Yeah, um, a lot of it shooting weapons. May attack with all its weapons it has when making a shooting attack as part of a reaction. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. not Including bad. as part of a reaction. Including yeah. as part of a reaction. So you yeah. can fire that twin that last cannon as a or the melter lance as um as a reaction. As a reaction. Yeah. yeah. That's actually not that bad. I don't that's think that's that bad. Um been, been doing well, that for ages. Yeah. Um yeah may attack with heavy and ordnance weapons while counting a stationary, even if it's moved in the preceding movement phase, and may declare charges as yeah. normal, regardless of any... Okay. And it's got... Is affected by Haywire, Detonation, and Battlesmith. Yeah. As you've had the Dreadnought type, and no model that does not also have the mechan maybe unit. Okay, so it's just itself. Well, it's itself and two others, potentially. Yeah. Okay. For 65 points each. I it is cavalry, never get... just out of interest. So if you're not sure about the cavalry rules, they can't be pinned. They're not slowed down by difficult terrain, even when charging. So no minus two. Cavalry models treat difficult terrain as dangerous terrain instead. So they still have to, so they basically, if they go through difficult terrain, they take a dangerous terrain mm-hmm. test. Um, they move 3d6 from falling back rather than 2d6. And no model that's also a cavalry unit may join a unit that is includes a cavalry model. Hmm. Um, it's not. Yeah, it wouldn't be my first choice, but it's not. It, not for in, heavy support. In the heavy support, in the slot that yeah, it, it feels. Yeah, I think it should. I think it kind of should case. be. It should be an elite or a fast attack. That's yeah. just my personal opinion. Yeah, but, I agree. I would stick it in fast attack every day of the week. It makes more okay. sense. Cause it's only a walker. It's not. It's not. Um, it's not know, a massive it's, guns it's, platform, is it? No, exactly. It's, no, yeah, it no. doesn't warrant being. And if you haven't got normal sentinels in there. I know they're in the PDF, but they're not in the actual... I mean, I think it would stick around, but it would be stick around and be a bit ineffective in the process. Mm, yeah. That makes a sense. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's still got a 2 plus save. It's still got... Has it got 5 plus in one or not? It doesn't, does it? Uh, I don't doesn't, think so. Don't no, think so. it doesn't. It just has so a straight it's up a lot worse plus. than a Dreadnought. Yeah. Yeah, it hasn't got an at, 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 at No, at some yeah. mantic, whatever it is. So, um, yeah, a, um, uh, Arcus would rinse it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, there's the expeditionary navigator. It's in the solar auxilia list. Oh, uh, awesome. There we go. Yeah. Hiding away. Okay. I was having, I was ironically, the navigator got lost. Mm. Uh, but anyway, okay. yes. Yeah, so now we've uh, completely slagged off the yeah. uh, Atheon. We got some sweet, sweet fluff about the Russ and the milk the Milkador. Malcador. That's what they call him. Sorry, Malcador. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's not your fault. I just misread it, Mr. B. Oh, it right, is, okay. they call me the Milkador. <laughs> uh, <laughs> plus <laughs> the equipment and armor used by the infantry tercios. Sweet, sweet, fluffy ju- juiciness. Yeah. You know, from no, the milk. From the, from the, yeah, Graham's like that. <laughs> not by those things. Is it AP2? I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mean. There's fabric involved. I don't think. I do, I do not think so, sir. Think this is not armor. Sir. This is a fancy dress costume. Yeah, uh, good best. day, sir. I, I good day. said good day. Uh, so the milkador approves, uh, and mm. who doesn't want to know more about the Lehman Rust tank? Yeah, yeah, that's great. And um, the studio also got some articles out too. 
Firstly, one about how they designed the new Lehman Ross, uh, obviously remaking the new Ross on a classic chassis um, based on the resin version. So you, you used to buy the very expensive oligarch money. Yeah, the Mars, Ross is, the Mars pattern with the upgrade yeah, stuff. From Forge World, but now they put that in plastic, which is great. And the obligatory part staff paint jobs of the new models on parade, which always causes problems, doesn't it? Yeah, there's always a. Uh... It's always somebody not happy about it. Yeah, that's uh, that's nice. Dom's one's nice in that kind of scale model esque look. Yeah, the um, I quite like the um, the golden ones. They're quite nice. The bronzy ones. Yeah. Oh. That's quite nice, actually. That kind of metallic look. That's good. Yeah, that's super good. That, uh, that's a really good job here. There's, there's, there's definitely somewhere they, they, they've gone to, oh, this is this is definitely works for this kind of Legion. Yeah, this, you're going to get those tie-ins. Aren't you? The ones uh, they promo are all in sons of horus cover colors conveniently well apparently that's not a sons of horus the green that's not sons of oh. horus that's oh. um that's a loyalist scheme retcon all you like i find uh, uh, it's the i like red... robin hood and his band of merry men at the on the bottom photo oh yeah they're quite cool it's the red ones that are sons of horus uh, okay um but yeah um that they do for um legion imperials but yes the robin hood ones do look quite good very nice. I do. It's 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 quite an it's an interesting. It's just really I like interesting. That green. Yeah, green stuff. Yeah. It is warp lightning contrast over Gracia. Wow, that's, that's a, super cool. Yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah, that's a cool. That's a cool. Green. It's a really nice bright emerald green. Yeah, yeah, and apparently the um the the uh, oh the uh, armor is a, uh, a Warhammer TV guide from a few months back on that yeah. one. Um, for bronze armor, yeah, super cool. They did like do a scheme. they did do a, a painting scheme for how to do that. Um, um, the green uh, boromite, 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 boromir, boragravia. Okay, I can't pronounce this word. I'm going to send it to you in the um, uh, in the um, in the chat and mm. see if you can pronounce it because I just can't. I just can't. Crystal X bronze with a wild wood wash full of bormanite. Bormanite. Okay, there you go. I would say that's. I would say that's bormanite. It's yes. uh, what some of my players feel when they're doing D and D on a Wednesday night. Boom, bormanite. Suffer, suffer from a, a very nasty case of bormanite. Yeah, apparently, they're the bormanite devils. Yeah, very cool. Uh, I, had, I, had, uh, I had the bormanite devils once. Yeah. It took me about three rounds of <laughs> antibiotics to clear it up. What's going on? Is noggin. He's got a weird. I thought you looked like a towel head on the sergeant at the front there. But I do quite like the uh, way they've done the, the, this. Uh, the, the, it just like there's a lot more freedom, I guess, with solar auxilia because there's like yeah. so many. Ex- you haven't you, got to find lesions to. Yeah, there's no yeah, def- sure. definition, but yeah. Okay, right. Uh, okay, cool. Um, yeah. So um, right, next campaign book is coming. Going to be the battle for Beta Garmon to tie in with the Great Slaughter Legion's Imperialis book. Haven't we done the Beta Garmon fifteen times over? We've, we've done the Beta Garmon. We've done Beta Garmon in Titanicus. We've done Beta Garmon cookies. We've just we've done Beta Garmon lunch ju- boxes. We've just done Beta Garmon in Legion Imperialis, and we're doing it in Twenty Eight Mil Heresy. We did it in at Titanicus. Last. Yeah. But the key is here: it's bringing back Shattered Legions and Black Shields. Oh yeah. It's going to be a. a a Funko Pop Beta Garmin uh, line of models. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And yeah. a fall so over Titan. So get, and a lot, and a few more characters. So, uh, plus some solar auxilia rooms. Mm, I've um, got to say, old, um, what's his name? Tybalt Mar. Tybalt Mar, yes. The yep. he's, a, he's handy. He's, he's, he's not shabby, is he? Yeah, he's the, great. The, I love the sword. So do I. AP2, melee, fleshbane, murderous strike, six plus. Oh, yeah, and he's, as a, as he a sign of the sword. Not right. bringing the chill at all. No way. He, he's right. He's, he's, he might be a day one purchase. He's, if he's, if he's, I mean, fleshbane, what's that, two plus normal? Okay. That's, it's a really nice model as well. Uh, Fleshbane. Um, oh, God. Uh, yes, I think, I think it's, I think it's, it's two. two plus. It's called instant death yeah. on a six plus. It's nice. 
Yeah, he's AP uh, two strength. Hopefully, he's strength three. Hopefully, he's strength five. And he's got the shock assault as well, which is his warlord trait as well. So, um, when he does, he shock. does a shock assault. A shock, shock assault. So, each enemy unit within twelve inches of Tibbet Mar must take a pinning test, and you can take an additional reaction during the assault phase. Nice. So that's not bad, forcing everyone within 12 inches of you to take a pinning test in your movement so phase. His sword, yes. in comparison to Sigismund's sword, yes. Sigismund's sword, plus two strength, so making him strength six. Yep. AP two, two-handed, so he doesn't get extra attack. Extra attack. Instant death, mastercrafted. Yep. Hmm... Always wounding on a flesh two plus. Yeah, yeah. So he's not always on a two plus because it doesn't matter who it is. Dreadnoughts, two plus. Yeah, two plus. Yep. But they have to re-roll, is, uh, don't they? Originally. He's handy. He has to handy. re-rolls. Yeah. His successes with the testing. But I mean, super useful, right? Yeah, definitely yeah. A, a good model. Yeah. Um, and what, be, what do you think of Endred Ha? I didn't look at him. So I'm not, I'm, have I'm me. not sure about Tibbot Mars Brow. If I'm honest with you. He's, he's, is this on his bedroom face? His, his, his bedroom face Ooh, has been now he's referred inquisitive. to He's inquisitive. Yes. Yes. He likes what he sees. <laughs> he sees. <laughs> someone he sees how this party's going and he's Someone quiet. wore the black negligee today. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, and then we've got... We got, we, we got he swiftly moves on as he tomorrow, goes. Tomorrow... Yes. The man's Tomor- I know tomorrow we're getting. Um, <laughs> still going. Uh, he's still going. He's still Shadrick, Shadrick Medusan is being pretty tomorrow, but we got. So you're Shadrick Medusan. That's what Andrew Hall's saying. That's what he's saying. I'm yeah. wondering whether him and that other special character are the, are the same party. But the shocks one. The shocks could one. Could be. They're both. Like, you know, well, he's like, whoa, and he's like, oh. I like, oh, I like, the, your, I like the color of your like, jib. Exactly. Like, I like what, what you're Jeff the Siege on. Lord is going. Like, no chance, mate. That. Not sure at all. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, <laughs> I was going to say something there that was definitely going to get cut. Yeah, that was totally uh, going to get cut. I could see what's uh, Amazing uh, how we can make up our own little vinaigrettes of uh, people's bedroom places. <laughs> vinaigrettes? Do you mean vin- anyway, vignettes? Anyway, vignettes. That's not, what I mean. I'm not ah. making a sauce to get a little <laughs> side sauce. So, anyway, Endred Ha. Her, her knickers right. fell down fast in yeah. the walls of the of the Imperial <laughs> Palace. <laughs> the Imperial Palace. <laughs> <laughs> it took a year for them to keep that in, Mr. B. Yeah, okay, so we've got um, Endred Ha. Yeah, Endred. He's a he's got an angry bed face. He's he's pretty. He's got he's got something going on. Uh, yeah, architect pistol and a power fist that he can get to hit at strength twelve. I mean, he's not shabby, is he? I quite like his model. He just he looks super bulky, which is good. I think. Again, yes, because be... he is he is bigger in, yeah, in yeah. the fluff. He's literally the biggest space marine that anybody's ever seen. And it's sometimes like, and, and people are like, "Are you a case. thunder warrior?" Because it's like a bit of law that's like he might actually be a thunder warrior, not a not an actual Astartes. Okay, so I don't know if that's still the case, but I remember I... It thing. But yeah, he's um he's he's big. He's literally the biggest uh, uh, space marine that anybody's seen. Do we have rules for black shields? No, no they're coming in the book. That's what... in the book. Okay. Yeah, they're That's... in the book. They're in the um, uh, Battle for Beta Garmon. Shattered Legion, so you can, you know, mix up your yeah. legions again from... And then the black shields are getting... Uh, yeah, rules, I but... like the fact that they've given actually given him a black shield on his armour. I mean... Oh, yeah. Not to label a point or anything. Not to, not, to, not to really stick it in there so you know what he is. Yeah, and they've got the and they've got all the um and I mean he's got a whole series of audio books about this mm. car, mm. which are actually pretty good. Um, he's super yeah. character to be fair. Oh, he is. He's he's, he's, uh, absolutely, he's absolutely fantastic. Um, really cool. And um, yeah, so he's uh, he's got lots lots going I, on there. I like his gun. Yeah, the it, architect it's, pistol. It's it's got about four different types of gun on it which is yeah. in like components from because you've got that bolter stock and body yeah then some kind of weird flamery thing you've got the storm bolters yeah. uh drum feed yeah it's super cool yeah, yeah. And if, if, and I, if, I, if i 
had any inclination for um black shields i would definitely buy that guy i also quite like the way is um the 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 halo thing on his backpack has still got the world eaters got the teeth on, on there yeah because because that's what he, he was a world eater I'd, so yeah i'd like to see if just read the 360 version so he, he kind of went mia for a bit so he didn't get the nails yeah yeah the war or the purge yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a praetor he goes off to do stuff comes back they've rebelled and he's like yeah, well stop this gone. i'm gonna go off and do and, and raise my own army with hookers and blackjack mm. was what that part, part of the um <laughs> initiation <laughs> part, of the, part of the advertising campaign it's come that- and join the black shoots because of blackjack okay. but basically they just, blackjack. They just, they just mm. go along and they just deal with um they just do stuff um that to, to create problems for angron in specifically and in, in horus in general so i bet that made angron really angry mm. oh, if you yeah. could get any more angry strength yep. 12 up to 12 strength 12 yeah that's interesting double out toughness six things but he's he was at least the, I think he was the only Black Shield special character in the old books. Yeah, I think he was. Yeah. yeah. Didn't you ever run in with him when you played him against him? Was that the other one? No, Sadrak. What's his chop? Shadrach Mitchison. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Shadrach Mitchison. But he's getting a preview tomorrow. Okay. Um, which we'll talk about in the next show, unless he's out by then. But yeah. So and that means that the. Where is it? Uh, Tibet Mar. I think this. I think someone said he's cut. His preview is coming. Oh, maybe that. Maybe I've misread that from somewhere. But we've also got Little Horrors coming as well. Okay. So he they're, they're going to be the, so Shadrach Magician of the Iron Hands and L- Little Horus Endred Har uh, and Tibet Mar. Sorry, of the uh, Sons of Horus and Endred Har of the um, Black Shields. Ooh. So that should be interesting. Nice. Okay. Uh... Uh, there was uh, there was being a uh, key word in this in the in the sentence here, a uh, limited edition art book released by Black Library for Black Library Day. Uh, it is sold. You can probably pick one up on eBay for four billion dollars, uh, and it's got all your favourite bits of art uh, in it from the Heresy and all the covers and stuff like that. Just seemingly just what it is. Um, uh, it's the kind of item which it, it's like actually yeah i would like to have that uh, if you go on the on, website you can make the pictures bigger and you can screen grab those for your laptop background <laughs> i mean like to be to be fair i have actually done a lot i've got i've got a lot of the artwork on on yeah, yeah for, you know when the, but it's just it's annoying because it's like that 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 thing that would be like oh yeah i i'd really like to have that on my coffee table but it's like the old vision to heresy books. I mean, they're great. I, mean, I, who... have, I have that bit of artwork literally above me. The yeah. um, one with the imperial fists coming through the yeah. wall. But I mean, it was forty quid. It's not a bad price for a for for a big book like that. Um, three hundred and twenty pages, and it would have wow. been great. But it, 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 they just did six and a half thousand of them, and I think that was a really poor poor decision. I think that would have. But then again, paper products, isn't it? Paper products. An absolute nightmare getting paper products at the minute, isn't it? Absolutely. What's that one? Oh, oh, I love that piece of artwork. It's that great. One. The Crimson Fist. And then I've got the... From the oh, yeah. The that's the the palace. I've got one, but it's um, Calf, I think. Was it my yes. No, yeah, it's, 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 it's um, one of the Calf ones. Um, yeah. Anyway, right. So that was that. Um, all right, Graham. I, I gave this one to you specifically because I didn't want to anger Chris. Hello. What's this shenanigans? Oh, this guy. Oh, this guy. Yeah. This guy. Custodian is getting a new plastic shield, Captain, and it's been met with a less than positive response. Yeah. Though in person, we're told it looks a bit better. I don't know by who. But apparently uh, that's a couple the, of guys who Jimmy guys, the one-eyed blind. Jim, uh, a couple Jim. of guys who went down for the weekend to see him in in person. Apparently, he, it, apparently he does look a lot better in person. Can't and the use photos, him in heresy. The photos don't do him justice at all. How, how can you not use him in heresy? Shield and spear. Ah, okay. Oh, so he can't take a shield and a spear. He's a shield captain. I thought they had a lot more choices. 
Uh, oh. I don't think you can. Oh, uh, fair I think enough, the Trillium right, well, Shield specifies Talking that you maybe you can, cannot maybe, take a two-handed weapon. I could maybe, be wrong, Mr. B. Let me just check. Well, maybe let's someone not, can convert him to have a sword or something. That's not. I don't know. I've, I've no, been known to be wrong once or twice on the show. Uh, it's um, you know, incredibly mm-hmm. often, but let's have a look. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Or make attacks during the assault phase using a weapon with the two-handed special rule. Guess what all the spears have got. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, fair enough. There you go. He's not usable in heresy as he is. You'd have to do some conversion work. I mean, he can use his uh, his dagger. He can use mm. his misery cord. You could change... Or just say the shield is a special, you know, mark of office or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I mean... Yeah. Sorry, Mr. B. He, no. I... He has an awful bed face. Uh, I cannot. He does. He looks. He to fathom. He's so very. Like, have you guys? You will have seen it. Star Trek Nemesis. Yes. Yes. He looks like Eric one Banana. of the. No, no. Ron Perlman's character. Yes. Uh, <laughs> he looks like a Reman in yes. from Star Trek Nemesis. Yes, he does. I'm gonna send as Graham seems. Uh, yeah confused by this uh, bit of sci-fi law, I should send you a photo. Been a long ah. time since I saw it. Anyway, the helmet doesn't look, I'm not doesn't, look surprised. doesn't look terrible. Yeah, but anyway, right, fair enough. Can't be used. Without conversion. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, and then final yeah, bit How of... easy is it going to be to do? Because a lot of general. these guys are, sorry, a lot of these sorry. guys have got integrated parts. So yeah, you're gonna have to. I doubt he's gonna be easy. Yeah, because that cloak's probably t- attaching halfway, apparently on that shoulder. Yeah, just looking at him. Super cool helmet. Use the helmet every day of the week. Yeah. Um, ah, well, never mind. Um, yeah. So last last bit of normal normal news was Warcom decided, hey, let's uh, let's uh, cause some havoc and talk about should you drill your barrels or not. Uh, and it created many arguments. Well, at least they offered both hey, sides look, of the story. Sometimes True. you've just got to let the world burn and, you know, taunt the fan base. Yeah, I, I think that's it. I, I, don't bother dr- I, don't, I don't bother drilling my um, my barrels. Life is way too short for yeah. barrel drilling nonsense. Jeez. Maybe tanks are a push, but I wouldn't do it on bolsters. Yeah, no, no, no. Just a black dot at the end. Anyway, um, right. So, um, epic news. We've got some epic news. What? Uh, what? Epic just a little news. bit. Just a little bit of it. Mm. Just a little bit. I think they're on a bit of a hiatus at the minute because they're, okay. they're trying to get stuff to actually stay in stock. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You, you I have any of us partaken of eight mil? Uh, Marines or solar rocks yet? Not yet, but I am planning on grabbing um, a box or two of the uh, uh, well, a box of the solar auxiliar support stuff. I mean, uh, it, I will get the big box at some point. It's just right now I'm kind of the plastic harvest wasn't the thing to tip me over the edge. I'll be honest no. with you. Um, what are you, Gray? I, I, are you I, thinking? Are you still? I still it hasn't hasn't really appealed to me to be honest. Yeah, I, I just, I'm not seeing enough tanks. I think that's what it is. I'm not seeing enough of the things that I want in the game. If that makes. I'm, I'm, I'm probably yeah. gonna grab a support box of the solar auxilia, maybe the bane blade or something. But I'm just gonna just dip my toe in the painting and see where we go from there. Yeah, fair enough. I just, yeah, just, I don't know why I thought. I think I need somebody to play it as well. And at the moment, there yeah, is just sort of see it and. So I don't want to kind of invest more money into an army. That uh, there's, a few, there's, there. yeah, exactly. there's a few lads up at um, Peter Lee who are playing regular on a Thursday. So okay. I'm, I'm thinking of heading up there at some point because okay. Thursday I might be able to start doing. It's just Tuesdays are like the no-no night for me at the minute. <laughs> and I'm like, Fair enough. At oh, least yeah. for the next four months. Wow. Well, anyway. um, so, yeah, the Great Slaughter, as we talked about, comes with a ton of lore about Beta Garmin. It does. Really good read. Going to just to be. And Warcom previewed some of it, which is still a decent read if you have been able to get unable to get the book. Yeah, because there's sod all available. Okay. 
<laughs> but it's actually a really good, really good reader for 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 um just for the law, just for the law. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, yep. And Titan Death got a preview. Um, on, it's just now? the Titan Death in in within didn't we have a... <laughs> within the Great Slaughter. Yeah. Is a specific set of rules for Legionis Imperialis yeah. to just use Titans. You mean like that? I, I mean, hang on a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I started this whole thing off by uh, at the start of the show. I said they're now doing films of musicals of films. Yes. Yeah. So now Games Workshop are doing rule sets in games at the exact same scale have existing rule sets for uh it looks to be a simpler less bookkeepy version of actual titanicus gotcha um using um using titan death stuff so Just play titanicus it'd be more rewarding you're not using any of the um a lot of you're not you're not using a lot you know the special dice or the orders and stuff like that it's that's i mean it's, that's the, that's the fun of that game yeah i think I think it's just a different, but Titanica still exists, so it's all good. I know, but it just seems odd to me that you would go. We have this existing rule. I mean, also, it, it increases sales towards Titanicus. Yeah. Whereas so, this would take sales away from Titan. Okay. I mean, hey, who am I to tell one of the most it, successful companies it, it in is, the last five years what to do? Yeah, it, 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 it is what it is. I might take a look at Titan Death at some point because that might be a way I can take a look at playing the game, but. I don't know. I like Titanicus, so yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Uh, and that uh, was kind of a big push with this book, just to have special rules just for Titans. Titan Death Game Raid. What a world, ladies and gentlemen. What, what a world. world. Uh, right, we got some... <laughs> the Heavy Metal team shares some notes on how they paint Titans, which they've done before. Yeah. Uh, they have. <laughs> Titanicus. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, it's late in the day. Uh, it might be useful for anyone as a refresher course on how to paint the 27 uh, DGOs that they've already described and how they painted them. Uh, all those documents are probably still around on the internet somewhere. Uh, so, you know. I mean, it's, Le- it's Legio Mortis again, so. Jeez. I painted my Legio, my time in Legio Defense or Colors. My Beautiful. actual big time. It looks nice. I'm with it. I mean, this isn't even tells you how to do it. it just shows you the pictures of the. Yeah, <laughs> it's, not the be- it's not the best. Ah, oh. oh, come on, come on, Games Workshop. Looks pretty cool, man. But there's lots of yeah, how to all, paint the Titans out rehashed there. Rehashed stuff. It is. Yeah, it's, it's not even you know vaguely new stuff. It's just we've got the same PNG of the Titan with this color scheme, and we're just going to change the background of it. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I do. We're getting those. I see. Like those, um, I'm sure somebody must have done this. Actually, Sorry. printed those um, banners. You know, the time banners. Yeah, yeah. For 28, good. Yeah, get. you could probably get them on Etsy or something. Yeah. Well, you can probably print, print them yourself if you've got a high enough. Um, I think it'd be like nice uh, to have them on like fabric or something. Or you know, vinyl. Actually. Or something, yeah. Oh, you yeah. fancy mm. dance. Anyway, so that was epic news. So shall we move epic on to our news. Aunt Sally's happy ending? Oh, well, let's um, let's do that. Yeah. What? Yeah. What would the uh, intro set music be for Aunt Sally's happy endings? That's. I think something for like Terry and June. You know. <laughs> There's one, one for the kids. <laughs> Terry and June, which ran from. Let's have a quick look. Let's just have a look at when Terry and June ran from because. Um, it's, you must remember Terry and June. Get I, it, I, Mr. I, B. No, no, I don't know. I'm, I'll, I'll look it up. I did, to Terry, and Terry and June. First episode date. 1979. Oh, I would go. Uh, right, it, I ran, until, ran until 1987. There you go. Uh, oh, what about the good life? I was born when it got broadcasting. Oh, flipping egg. What's the words with garbage thinking? Sweet, uh... summer, sweet summer children that you are. 
<laughs> Terry June. The good life. Okay. Again. The good life. That's that definitely. It's probably repeated on whatever that channel probably is. Probably on UK TV Gold or something. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. The same one that's hosting um, your the shoddy good life banquets. finished um, four <laughs> years before I was born. Did it? Yeah. No way. It finished in 1978. Well, the good life did. Yeah. Never. Yep, 30 episodes, four series, broadcast between 1975 and June 1978. Goodness me. Goodness me. Well, there we go, folks. Um, oh, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit too young for that. A classic game show-esque or sitcom from the 70s. That's the, okay. that's the, well, that's the well, look well, you're going for. That's what we're going for. Okay. All right. And he, he actually get Matt Berry to do it because he did a, he did a really good album. Sure, theme I'll, tunes. I, a random person, yeah. will get Matt Berry. <laughs> yes, to please. do a oh, theme tune my word. A for a section. section of a... Doesn't need to be long. Fifteen seconds, it's fine. You know, he, he does he does great work. He does. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'll send an email. Send an email. Okay, says. I'm gonna say, just say Graham said, can you? <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That would do it. absolutely. Graham, all right. You so, Aunt Sally's happy ending. Hang on, yes, hang sir. on, hang on, hang on. Can I just we've, we've skipped over three bits of information here that I mm. need to get angry about? A, cool. why I'm a 40,000 power wash simulator. What the fuck <laughs> is that? Uh, a, how is power wash simulator even a game? And I love weird simulator games. Power wash simulator is brilliant, I'm sure it is. What's the point? Uh, get a power washer. Clean yeah, stuff. <laughs> Do it. literally, probably buy a power washer for cheap. Having you can get the game that, for having no, said, it is it is actually a really good game. It would be a better game for some VR, first of all, and secondly, yeah. I actually yeah. quite see the attraction of hosing down a right, tank in Doom Box. Yeah, but you know, of hosing down like a predator or something, right? And uh, I think it's it. got a Redemptor Dreadnought, a Rogal Dawn tank, a Land Raider. But only yeah, but... to prove people who overweather their tanks to say, look, they had power washes. And that I think it's got a mechanic and bloke doing it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, okay. I can see there's a knight there. I mean, but what are you washing off? Because I doubt it's, you know. The, the de- detritus of battle, detritus, which is, yeah. which is fair blood, enough. Which is going to be just sort of. Anyway, it's a yeah, big anyway. thing. Big deal. People like power wash simulator. I don't know. It's, I just... it's a niche. Would I buy it? I no, just want to know it. who it's approached like, who. These are these to... these are this genre called cozy games, aren't? They? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's like they're, uh, they're, Lawnmower they're kinda... Simulator is pretty good as well. I mean, Lawnmower you should know. That. I mean, it's, it's it is a to be fair, it's kind of <laughs> like a hop, step, and a jump to farming simulator. I, I have, you know, you spent many an hour plowing the field, as it were. I, I <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> In my younger days, as a man of romance. Um, I mean, I am currently turning so in Ark, Wild Oats. Ark Survival into Grand Design Simulator by <laughs> just, build, just building uh, elaborate uh, houses to live in uh, when I should be doing stuff with dinosaurs. But, yeah, yeah. Hey. I mean, uh, there's some great simulator games out there. I mean, uh, one of my favourites is a PC Building Simulator. Why? Why? It's great. I'm sure it is, but why? But also, I want to know who approached who for Power Wash Simulator. I mean, to be fair, that's a good question. Um, what I'd love to have been involved that, in that. Who wrote that email? Hi, one guy. game that I have quite liked that you guys will probably be like, "What on earth is a model building simulator?" Yeah, it must be that's your life. <laughs> that's, that's literally what you do as a hobby. <laughs> Doing that. That's like. Professional footballers playing FIFA, effectively. <laughs> Which they do do a lot, to be fair. They do, oh, no, they do. yeah, they do. But, just... oh, it's great. There's got, um, they've got Witcher and Cyberpunk uh, models in there now. It's brilliant. Never but... really understood that. Give me no. a nice RPG. And then... Speaking of, yeah, I didn't talk about games that we played. Just going to oh, give a shout out to uh, Death Stranding. It's my yeah, next so game to play. I, I'm playing that after I finish playing Yakuza. I would only say this, right? There's... And this is the, when I was playing this and talking to my colleagues. So I recommended this by a colleague because I played it originally and I was like, what is this nonsense? Um, I will say this about it. It's got a 10 hour tutorial. <laughs> but it's basically a 10 hour tutorial. I thought the, um, I thought the um, tutorial in um, flipping um, Yakuza Zero was a bit mental. It's, it's a crazy, but it's not supposed to be a tutorial, but it feel, it is kind of a tutorial. And once you get past that, bit, it's absolutely awesome. But I would also say that um, great acting in it. 
right? Really good acting. And so it's Mads, got, um, it's got thingy it's got, Reedus in it, hasn't it? It's got Reedus, it's got Mags Magdalson. Yeah. And it's got the woman who played Lady Thingamy in June 2. Beautiful uh, descriptive as always. Oh, I can't remember. I don't know what the actress Rebecca is. Rebecca Ferguson. Is. No. Florence Pugh? The, no, the other one. There's a third one. Anyway, uh, she's a liar. She played Lady, one of the Ben and Jesuits. Oh. That, um, seduces. Oh, oh Anna C... Taylor Joy. No, no it's but... the one that's in James Bond. Yes. C. Say you. But anyway, it's got a great cast. I'll say her name properly. Give me one second. Story's pretty awesome. I mean, super awesome. But it has got like a, um, it must be an hour of cutscene at the end of the game. Just to give you some context. Leia Seydoux, I believe. Yeah, that's it. Leia but I will say this, though. I do wonder whether I. it's a game, it's a bit like jazz, right? Which jazz is literally called musician's music because it, I hate it. And I'm not a musician, but musicians seem to love it, right? Because it's just twiddly nonsense to me. I do wonder if it's one of those games where I'm like, oh my God, this is incredible. But that's because I kind of make games. And, but most of it, you probably just wouldn't go, oh yeah, that's okay. But, um, what's is... his name? Um, oh, I can't remember what he did. The, the Japanese fella. Hideo Kojima. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the one um, that gets a 10 minute monologue at the, um, at the Game Awards every year. Yeah, I mean it's it is a impressive piece of work. I will give it that, and I enjoyed it a lot. But it's um, there's a lot of stuff going on that's super clever in that game, and I'd hate to work for him. I would literally hate to work for him because I imagine you go into a meeting with him. He say, "Right, I want you to do that." And you're like, "You can't do that." Well, I want you to do that, and yeah. then you, and then what, you end up doing it. Do. Yeah, and so that's what um, it's going to do. Uh, what are you playing on? PS Five. Oh yeah. But, oh, they, they gave it away free this last christmas gone or the christmas before on steam on on epic games yeah anyway just a little but don't be put off is what i'm going to say don't oh, no, it's it's first... it's it's next on my it's next on my list to play after yakuza zero it's got a super story really worth sticking with yeah. but yeah anyway sorry massive okay. right okay what was the rest of what you wanted to be angry about chris that was it really simulator. power simulator that's power kind simulator. of it yeah okay cool Right. Put, shall we do? Um, shall we? Yeah. Shall we see what so we're these, up about Sally. These aren't really Aunt Sally issues. They're more of kind of clarifications. To be fair, there's only one that I would say might put a smile on Wurzel's face, but the okay. rest of them are, are perfectly reasonable. To be completely clear, um, so the first one. This is this has happened a few times. And um, if you've got, let's say, you've got a piece of terrain, and yeah. on that piece of terrain you've got five guys, and you want to assault them with like a jump pad, you can't. The argument was, can you still assault them, even if you can't fit the model physically on the piece of thing that they're on? Um, I would have thought so. No, you no? cannot. No, you've got to get into physical base-to-base contact. Now, I would never put but if all that rule. Balance, yeah, but balance. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it's always been the case of. Okay, going back to also, the you end up with people board. put doing terrain that's only yeah, that it's required. Board. Realm of Battleboards, right? The rule has always been, and I'm going to have to flipping dig it out, and it's, it, 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 you know, the first rule, have fun. It's always been a case of, okay, if you can't literally physically paste them there because they keep slipping or there's not an even ground for whatever, because terrain shouldn't play that yeah. big an impact on the actual, then you just, it's still, oh, sorry, no, I'm, I'm, I, I wouldn't pull that rule. And if someone tried to, to use the argument, well, I can't assault you because I was like, get in there, mate. And yeah, this is basically the long and short of it. If people are saying technically rules is written, you can't assault them because you can't physically get a model in base to base with them. But realistically, you know, you just say it happened. I would anyway. I mean, otherwise yeah, they, would, they become. Otherwise, you've placed them there to be not assaulted, which is yeah. someone. Someone comes. Someone tries that. Um, I. I'd, I'd be given the. I'd be given the game to the. Oh. Well, not the the game, but I'd be given the. Uh, I'd be like given the rule to the. The yeah. rule to the other guy. I'd be like, I mean, yeah. the thing is, if you're in combat, if someone's within, what is it, two inches of a... Um, it within one inch horizontally yeah. or three inches vertically. Yeah, then they can still get into combat. So even if they... Yeah, yeah. so you can still get around it. Yeah. There's, um, Charging an accessible unit. Sometimes a unit may be able to make itself inaccessible to target the charge. Physical space on top of a showing piece. I mean, me that wishes the charge unit may do so, but such a successful 
engaging in range the following fight phase any count any model in the charging unit that can get within one inch horizontally or three inches vertically as being in so if yeah. you can do that you're okay but if you can't yeah. you're screwed yeah what, so if you had a, if you had like a jet if it was like 12 inches away for example or they were upper level and you you were to assault them with a junk pack you couldn't because you wouldn't fit any other criteria i.e you can't get within an inch of the model and you can't win three inches vertically of it. you can but, you but would land you would land below them yeah but if you imagine a terrain piece that, that wasn't leveled that was just solid and you were at the bottom and they were 12 inches away from you at the top oh yeah then, yeah, yeah no yes oh sorry okay yeah that, yeah, yeah yeah do you see what i mean so but i think i would play that yes the assault still happens because they're kind of jumping in and stuff but if rules is and, written i don't think you could again to play another bit of devil's advocate here a lot of the new terrain that was out for a while the gap between floors was it was it was ridiculous so yeah um so i i mean when we've had that situation at company of legends we've always ruled it as it's three inches yeah, it, counts so it looks nice, but it counts totally. as free because otherwise it it, it, it it unbalances the game somewhat. This is one that would be dear to Chris's heart. Um, yeah. The next one. When a unit enters from reserve, it's, is it only units with August scanners that can intercept or can other units without in- intercept use three action points? The, yes, they can, but they uh, use up your... So uh, if they do, yeah. this, is where, this is where it got really interesting because there's a limit of three reactions per phase right yeah but the augury scanner as the conversations doesn't, doesn't count the, towards it doesn't count towards it yeah so if you have if you're deep striking one unit in mm-hmm. and you've got four units of augury scanners yeah those four units can still get intercept right and if you've got two reactions in the movement phase two other units could also pile in it's why augury scanners are assholes so yeah that is pretty st- Pretty scary, actually. So yeah, yeah. It, it, it goes over and above the. Th- so just put it out there, kids. Does doesn't it ignores the three reactions per phase? You uh, rule. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, because it doesn't apply to your no uh, by points. Uh, your reaction. I'm a, yes. I, I must admit, I, I do think that augury scanners kind of need to be toned down a bit. Uh, they're okay. It's just um, or there needs to be a way to save against them a bit easier i don't know something it's just they feel a bit too powerful right now you've got to bear in mind that if you deep strike by if you deep strike within six inches that model can be pinned yeah so they then can't take a a reaction Mm -hmm. so you can still stop or risk scanner nonsense but you've got to be yeah, pretty uh, ballsy. You've got to be doing the, the Chris Mills special. Chris Mills, like getting, yeah, 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 getting Close right to up. Yeah, absolutely. So it's yeah. only one model. So custodians have the advantage where they can, they've got a three inch uh, unit coherency, mm-hmm. and you don't have to deep strike yeah, under a template any longer. So you can be an arsehole and you can spread models out, mm. and then you can affect multiple units that way. Um, so there are ways around it. But yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you're you hoping for that pinning totally. so that you can nullify. And the other part of that question that, that the chap had was, um, does the plus one to the ultramarines thing stack? So if there were three soon units, would it be plus one, plus two, plus two? It doesn't. Mm. So yeah, just just there. So anyway, not, these aren't, aren't Sally questions, but I think uh, he may have had a bad experience with somebody. <laughs> he's, got, but, yeah, he's, he's had his fingers burnt. Yeah. Trying, to, trying to clarify some points. But yeah. So, um, but yeah, just getting out there, always kind of ignore the limit so they can you know, load them up and mm. anybody comes at you, yeah. you can just blow them that's, away. That's one of the things that I don't like, that I haven't liked about them, is mm. that you they unbalance that phase in terms of reactions. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, but again, any sports squads, right? They can all take an always kind of for 10 points. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely lethal. Anything's coming is going to be absolutely rinsed. Yeah, um, you can. But if this, you're, I mean, if you're sensible, yeah, I uh, would his, deep yeah. strike next to that. It, it does. It does oh. feel very much like we've got this big imbalance between deep strike um, now. It's. Uh, I mean, I've I got my I mean, I've got my head around it a bit more now. I've done it a few times. I'm. It's getting used to it. But yeah. It's 
you need them to fail those proliferation of, yeah. of, yeah. of um all uh, yeah just because you had night right. fighting i suppose if you had night fighting right and you and you played into turn two <coughs> night fighting's minus one to your leadership as well so that pinning test would be harder yeah yeah, or easier yeah. for you to pull off. Here's another one that caused some some good good constant healthy debate. And this is Not a little like... bit aunt Sally. Do you get plus one attack bonus for a model when attacking with a melee weapon and a melt bomb? Mm. Ooh, now this this did this did go back and forward because ultimately it's melee, because it says it's melee weapon. It's not specialist weapon. It's does it give you plus if you've got two, two is melee it weapons a, at attack? Is it a thing in the bombs? It's well. What do you? So I would say no. Yeah, I agree with that. The, the I, gut I, feeling here maybe, is no. Maybe it's possible, but I don't think in. I don't think it. I don't think it works. I don't think it should work. But then you can't use melt. I mean, yeah, but you're not necessarily moving the melt multiple. Are you? You're just using it potentially for a extra attack. If you see what I mean. It's like having. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not a weapon. I mean, you could use a close combat knife. Twenty-two comments on this one. Um, so, yeah, S- surprisingly, rules, not going to be that bigger thing. <laughs> rules as written. There's a lot of people arguing about this one. Interestingly, um, so the the kind of counter is that in the detonation rule, which is what the yeah. has. It says you can either make one attack with the melt bomb. Fair play. But what if you had a chainsaw and a melt bomb? They're both melee weapons. You have two melee weapons plus one attack. So rules is written. And again, I think that's where it kind of got to with this. But yeah, it's just. It's just naughty. Um, I would, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it really does require a clarification. So let me just have a quick look. I'm trying to think of grenades or. Uh, if there's anything in that section that I'm just, I'm just be able to have looked, if there's even a section for grenades, but there isn't, so that's what it's useful. Well done. Internet. Ah, oh, weapons, bombs. There we go. It's 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 a ridiculous lot. I mean, basically, most people are saying yes, it's a ridiculously gamey way to pull that pull that off. Uh, again, Company of Legends. I think we would end up saying no. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I bin. think I think we would basically be saying no because it's it's not. Yeah, it's a it, it's a it's a it's a game you play with other people. Absolutely. But so that's, your, that, uh, that was the I only mean, one that I thought was somewhat aunt Sally's because you, someone, there's an argument there. I mean, honestly, if someone comes comes at me with that, I'm I'm like, nope, nope, I'm done. Yeah. Anyway, the, there's been a lot of argument about it, but ultimately that's where. The, the conversation seemed to settle. So it'd be interesting to see if anybody's got any, another view I, on that. I would literally walk away from a game if uh, uh, playing that. Because I'm not yeah. I'm not there. I'm not there to I'm not there to, to do that. And I'm exactly. not being I'm not trying to be funny there and saying like, oh well, I'm not gonna play someone like that. I'm just like if someone's gonna play like that and use those type hey, of this, this is the type of thing that gives us fantastic viewer what? figures of so uh, over ten thousand just by the fact that people that we can argue about these things and you know point them out. So yes. Um not on flipping YouTube. Watch some on YouTube, people. Yeah, please. YouTube. It's depressing. We put so much work into it. Uh next one. <laughs> next one. I'm, I, hey, look, I'm working on theme tunes. What, what do you think? Yeah. What else can we do, really? I mean, goodness. Um I can another it, button if you like. I mean I was gonna say you were I did wonder if that was what you were going for a particular demographic there. That's it. I've the Carlos Carl we need to get a medallion. Carl, you know. Carl Carlos Lucador. You could get alter ego. You could get a medallion, maybe with a warrior lodge coin on there. That'd Beautiful. Be, that'd I be can, on, we can make that happen. Hey, look, yeah, yeah. I can make that happen working, work tomorrow. Work in the shop. Yeah, brilliant. Um, this next one was interesting and it, it fell on an interesting pattern. Um, very specific to the uh, Empress Children, which of course you, you lads did. Um, do you play a few games a weekend? Have a question relating to the Empress Children models. Models that are immune to fear X ignore sonic shriekers. Are stubborn models using immune to fear X? They're not immune, but no some recent back reps of how it was played. So stubborn, I'll, I'll spare you the long and the short of it, is stubborn makes you uh, immune to modifiers to morale and pinning. Mm-hmm. But what it doesn't do is make you immune to change to morale for falling back. So 
yes, you would be. You can ignore the fear effect. But uh, if you were falling back, your leadership test would be impacted by chronic shrinkers was where it seemed to go. Uh, yeah, makes sense. Mm. Yeah, because I think Stubborn specifically says. Um, yeah. So yeah, anyway, so- a, a, a person called Nikki Hamster uh, pointed that one out. So oh. yeah, hats, hats off to them. Good, good one. I would not have, would not have thought of that. So yeah, that was quite a cool little one I thought. And finally, oh, this one was in Crusade and Heresy. So is that link going to work? No, it's not. What is, copy, what is link. Crusade and Heresy like these days? I, I haven't visited for a while because I only tend to kind it, of glance at it when it. I, when it yeah. I've not been using it as much. It's gotten a bit negative around um, around uh, release. It's, uh, it's gotten a bit negative. It's gotten a bit negative. I mean, it never actually used to be like ridiculously negative. Um, but it's uh, uh, since the release issues have been going on, people have been really, really. Gotcha. Mm. I must admit, I, I occasionally glance through it, but yeah, it yeah. can be uh, can be a bit negative. It's but nothing anyway. against the guys who are, you know, guys running it. It's just, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty literally ev- every, every week there's a release. It's like, oh, they're, they're purposely choking off the supply to make people want to buy I mean, more. It's and it's like 23,000 members. So it's yeah. not doing, can't be doing bad. Oh, no, it's, it's not doing too bad. It's just, it's just the way people are always like, oh, they're, mm. they're, they're purposely stopping us buying stuff in order to mm. drive FOMO. And it's like, are you absolutely stupid? Do you really think? But they are gonna purposely keep sales low in order mm. to. Sorry, I'm I'm being a bit. You're going off target again, but that's yeah, fine. Sorry, I it's, mean, it's just it's just your, it's, mine and Chris's tangents tend to be rude innuendos. Yours tend to be things about supply. Just go. Well, no, it's just it's just the it's just the fact that people literally think that they that that they would that they would purposely keep the supply low yeah, in order expect, to yeah, in order to thing, and it's like that that if they tried that, the shareholders would literally rip them apart. Yeah, it's yeah. a business. It's not a, you know. Yeah. So anyway, how does this question was? How does defligate work with damage mitigation? A simple playing it as as wounds caused before feel no pain generate an extra hit. But as I was playing, mm. wounds taken after all saves and mitigation. Can't find it. So I after so you, all saves and mitigation. Yeah. So oh. you would take the wounds. You would take the first lot of wounds. Feel no pain. Yeah. So you, do then, armor, so you do armor save, fail, still no pain, yeah. wound. Whatever's left over would be a wound, and then, then those the, would be the ones that defligate. Yeah, yeah, the ones so that get I'm, through the armor bane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that gets well, through the armor and the feel no pain, those are the wounds. You wouldn't do the damage mitigation. But, but I think somebody was arguing that it's where... So you've done the wounds, and so it's the wounds that have been caused at that point before the damage mitigation that you count for deprecate i've never i would never play it that way i would always go the actual the yeah. wound hasn't been caused because the damage mitigated the wound yeah that's that would be my yeah logic. you don't you don't take you take your feel no pain on the wound yeah so you take the wound from the uh from the and then it counts as not being a wound it doesn't generate mm. a wound once you feel no pain it otherwise you would have no point in feeling no pain. Yeah. 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 Um, crazy. I think so. Yeah. I just that seems like someone who loves Volkai. Well, and... well, well, let's have a look. Defrag wasn't me on unsaved wounds. <laughs> Damage mitigations happen after unsaved wounds. Yeah. So you. Mm, they're saying you, it's you unsa- You don't save the first. You don't save the initial wound. Mm. With the with your armor save, for instance, so it's an unsaved wound at that point. Then you have your damage mitigation on the unsaved wound. If you fail that, then that generates an additional. No, see, they're saying it's the other way around. Are they? Which, which seems interesting. People. Well, the 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 argument is that you get defrag on unsaved wounds. Yeah, and but the, Yet damage mitigation happens after unsaved wounds. Mm. If you see what I mean? Yeah. So it is kind of an unsaved wound, is the argument there. I'm, I'm not sure I'd ever play it that way, but that seems to be the way that, that folks are looking at it. 
it's per no. unsaved wound and not not impacted by damage mitigation. Roll mm. ten saves three or fail. You just still need three defrags before you've got the damage mitigation pile, which seems weird to me. When does do... does 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 feel no pain? Uh, when this model suffers yeah. an unsaved wound, it can ah. make a special feel no pain roll to avoid being wounded. There's a special saving throw which is made after it's unsaved, unsaved wounds, wounds are suffered. Exactly, that's the point. Feel no pain rolls may not be taken against unsaved wounds. Roll a d6 so, each time an unsaved wound is suffered. On a result that is equal or greater than the value in brackets, the unsaved wound is discounted. Treat it as having been saved. On any other result, the wound is taken oh, as normal. Treat it as having been saved, not the yeah. key. So it becomes a saved wound when you succeed in the feel no pain. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's interesting, the, isn't that's it? That's the whole point of feel no pain. Because people are saying here, you count. So you would give you an example here. You would roll, let's say you roll 10 wounds yep. with a Volkite. Yep. Uh, you and save you four and you fail six. Yep. You then roll Defligate on those six. No. And then you roll the field of pains after that. No. Mm. Because you haven't completed, you haven't, it's when you take an unsafe wound. But I think that they're using that wording about unsaved wounds. You see what I mean? But then yeah, the, but you've, the wording you've, clearly says it counts as being saved. But then it counts as being saved. So uh, yeah. basically, yeah, you do yeah. armor save. Read that bit again, pain. Chris. Which bit? bit? You just read out, sorry. So this, bit, is the feel no, this is the feel no pain special rule. Yeah, yeah. When a model with this special rule suffers an unsaved wound. So I've got an unsaved okay, wound, right? It yeah. can make a special feel no pain roll to avoid being wounded. This is a special yeah. saving throw which is made after unsaved wounds are suffered. Yeah. Feel no pain rolls may not be taken against unsaved wounds that have the instant death special rule. That's okay. fine, we know that. Yeah. Yeah. Roll your d6 for each unsaved wound that you've suffered. On a result that is equal or greater than the value in brackets, the unsaved wound is discounted. Treat it as being saved. On any other result, the wound is taken as normal. Ooh, so basically, okay. you yeah, it's armor save, fail, feel no pain. Then that's an unsaved wound. Then you can apply your deflagrate. Okay. So if you read the deflagrate, well, after the normal attacks both weapon have been resolved, count yeah. the number of unsaved wounds caused on the target unit. Yeah, but they're not completely unsaved until you've completed your feel no pain. Okay. Because mm. it's a, a step between because you've still got that process. Yeah. I because mean, you're then at, at the end of feel it, no pain, it, you're counting it as being safe. Yeah, I wouldn't change how I'm doing things. I'm just saying that I think that people I, are saying it's, it's different. It's people yeah, maybe it is a little bit on ish that one maybe wurzel has got a smile on his chop Perhaps, i think yeah. i think i think wurzel and those people are <laughs> having a whale of a time <laughs> okay quite possibly that would make because it's when you suffer the unsafe wound that's what i would go with right an so, unsafe wound is basically the wound that gets allocated to the model from my yeah, point of view it's yeah that what they're talking about is kind of like a timeline difference yeah. of understanding which is they're saying an unsafe wound is before you make your no. fear of pain. Because you do your fear of pain when you suffer the... And I think the key wound, word you mentioned which you is the then, fact that it says it's counted as a mm, saved wound. It's, yeah, you treat it as being saved. Mm. So anyway, it's what do, your... What do, what do people at home think would be interesting to find out? Because um, that that's a little bit of a gnarly one, that one. It is. Okay. And that, my friends, is all that Aunt Sally's got to um, manipulate this week wow. um but some interesting little little i like uh, I like i like fondling with a little bit of tickling at the, at a little the bit of a tickle at the end there just to yeah just to get interested right let's us move on to upcoming events which margaret can talk about Hey guys, Chris and Graham are uh, not here, just me for the next two sections. We're going to start off with upcoming events. Uh, we're going to be putting together the list on our website. Again, it was very 
popular um, prior to the pandemic and it kind of fell off and it's, it's something I need to get back on. So we've got a list of events. Some of these will be sold out. So, but always take a look just in case if, if you're interested because there may be tickets to go on later up. So we're starting off on April the 6th for the Corsair Gambit and it's a Legion Imperialis event at Entoyment in Bournemouth. So it's good to see uh, LA events be happening. Uh, also on April the 6th, we've got Silent Wars 1 in Cheltenham um, and Orphorn's Hope, the Siege of Mortium Secundus down in Stratford-upon-Avon. Uh, we also have April the 13th, so next week, uh, the week after, sorry, uh, Conquest of Anura. Uh, that's an Age of Darkness and Legionus Astartes, uh, uh, sorry, Legion Imperialis event. Uh, but, but change the LI, not LA. <laughs> uh, and that's up in Inverness, a bit too far for me. Uh, actually, it's also my wife's birthday. Uh, hence why I'm not going to Imperium, where Chris, Graham, and uh, Dave are going. Um, that's up in Stockport. Uh, I believe they still have some tickets left. Uh, worth checking out. That's April the 13th and 14th. Uh, I think I've got the two-day dates on here. If I haven't, I do apologize. Uh, then April the 21st, Betrayal at Crawley 5 in, surprise, surprise, Crawley. Um, then on also 21st, we've got up Apoc Showers at Adeptus Titanicus event. So again, it's good to see Adeptus Titanicus is still being played uh, down in High Wickham. Uh, on April the 27th to the 28th is Conquest of... C is the Siege of Steel, the Conquest of Goth. Uh, that's uh, the outpost. One of our uh, um, one of our friends that we've got uh, a uh, um, a deal with to um, sell you your um, your uh, uh, stuff for our affiliate link. <laughs> Find the words. Uh, I, I was actually thinking of going there, but it's a case of because it's two days. It's not there and back. It's not terribly far, but I'd have to get a you know I'd probably have to get somewhere overnight, and I'm broke. Um, <laughs> uh, that's what you get when you buy a solar auxilia box. Um, then we've got the. May on the May on fourth and fifth, we've got the two day heresy campaign in Hockley. Um, May the eleventh, there's a few free events on the May eleventh. We've got um the battle for Odi Odysseus Free in Sutton and Ashfield, the fall of Cerberus Secundus in Cheltenham, and Twisted Titanicus Six again a Titanicus event down in Leighton Buzzard. Uh, May the eighteenth, we've got the Forge of Heroes in Havant. Uh, May 25th, Beneath the Shroud of Thomas Gade in Burgess Hill. Uh, 22nd of June, we have Goonhammer Open, Heresy and Titanicus events, both separate events happening there in Leicester. Uh, I think that's sold out. Um, I was trying to get tickets to there, but it's a case of mm, struggling because I've got a big event later in the year, which is kind of taking up all my money. <laughs> July the 20th, Return to the Moons of Memlock, Bristol. Uh, and we are running an event this year, although most of the tickets are now sold. We've got two tickets left as of time of recording. The Battle for Zerion Pr Zephyron Prime. I wrote that name and I can't pronounce it. The Eclipsing War in Durham. Well, Croxdale, just outside of Durham. Um, and that should be good. That's August the 4th. Um, tickets are £17, flat one. Uh, just a one day, three games, two and a half half thousand two thousand five hundred points it should be fun um and i'm really looking forward to it uh, and i hope you guys uh if you are coming are looking forward to it it's great um august the 17th to the 18th we've got the battle royal and royal rumble these are tournaments however and they are in yatley october the 5th my birthday uh gods amongst men i was i'm, I'm actually slightly interested in this one can I swing it for my birthday? It's a militia and solar ox. Oh, it's sold out. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, follow them though. It's Danger Close Horse Heresy uh, running that one. I'm gonna follow them simply because I like the idea of a solar and militia event only. It should be interesting. It'll be different, and that's in Bristol. Uh, it's a far away anyway, so I might not be able to get there. Or I could team it up with a visit to my brother. <laughs> uh, November the second, Echoes of Betrayal in Portsmouth. And that's all your dice rolling events that we are aware of, people have told us about and, and stuff. So if you do have an event, send us in the information. Info at edgeofempire.co.uk. Not the Russia Edge of Empire. Keep, keep I, I'm going to have to make that a forwarding address now because people still use it a lot. Uh, okay, non-dice rolling events. Some of these might be relevant to people. Some of these not so much. Um, we've got Salute 51 on April the 13th in London. 
May the 31st to June the 2nd, UK Games Expo in at the NEC in Birmingham. I'll be working there actually in the Bring and Buy. Uh, I'm volunteering to uh, help them out for a few, for for a little bit in there. So it should be fun. My first time working directly with for them. Um, and that is a you know Ben. It's a, a Games Workshop major sponsor of it. They'll have stuff there. I imagine you'll see a lot of Age of Sigma focus at that. But it's worth going along to. They often have little tournaments. I don't know if there's any relevant tournaments going on um they usually have an underworld sometimes there's combat patrol stuff like that definitely worth a visit to actually one of the, uh, one of the, it is the third biggest tabletop convention in the world i believe um but anyway august the 8th to the 12th is worldcon 2024 in glasgow now you might be thinking world science fiction convention but actually a lot of black library authors will be there um as attendees not not guests they'll be there just as normal people hanging out having fun going to panels and it's usually a really really good event warhammer is usually pretty well represented at british world cons um and we haven't had one for a decade now um uh, well i mean ireland doesn't count really does it <laughs> um but i'll be there and it's going to be fun um definitely worth checking out um september 27th to the 29th localish northeast tabletop expo at gateshead there is a heresy event there now but at the moment the tickets are only open to members of the group that run this um so i haven't uh, put it in the events list but we will uh i know the tickets are at this time i've just bent sort of a blood letter <laughs> i know the tickets are all at this time sold out but they may, may more tickets may come available later on if people drop out or whatever so once that goes public for sale we will put it up um and that's yeah gate said september 27th 29th i'm gonna go along and have a hangout i'm not able to get tickets for the event i'm a bit disappointed in that but uh october the 3rd to the 6th this is an international event beal 2024 in essen uh, Germany. That is where the European leg of the Golden Demon is being held. I think this is the first time ever we haven't had a UK-based Golden Demon. So if you are in the UK, you want to enter the Golden Demon, you've got to go to Spiel, um, which is the world's biggest tabletop convention and one of the world's biggest conventions by a lot. So really good event, although it's more of a trade show, to be fair, than a yeah. Uh, and November the 30th, Battleground 2024. It's a local convention over in Stockton. I'm actually going to speak to them and say, hey, how about me and Graham go down and run some heresy um, as a demonstration game? We'll we'll see. We're going to, I need to speak to Graham about that. He'll probably be hearing the first time. I'm going to mention that on here. Actually, I'll, I'll message him before I put the show up. And that is your events. So anything uh, you've got, let us know. Uh, and if you're going to events, let us know. It'd be nice to have event reviews uh, coming in from people. Anyway, thank you very much. And we'll go into the close in which I'm afraid you're just going to have me again. All right, guys. Sorry, just me. So it's time for the close. We're going to sort off. Uh, well, I'm going to sort off. I'm sorry this show came out a lot later than we recorded it. We've had, there have been some personal issues in um, my life um, that have created an issue. We, we had a, a family thing happen, um, which a, a death in the family, and it just, it, 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 it's sort of taken a lot of my time having to help out with that. Um, and so, yeah, I apologize. Next episode, hopefully be out a lot better, a lot sooner than this. So we'd love it if you left us a review on iTunes. Um, follow us on the socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. We're going to, I think we've got a Fred's account. I'm, I'm going to try and work on the social media stuff. I know we're very bad at giving updates, aren't we? Um, and we should do more. And I think that's one of the reasons why we struggle to grow beyond the audience that we have. Um, okay, so in the meantime, say hi. Let us know we're good. You know, tell Chris your missus love your, your missus snuggles. I do. Um now if you want to get in touch with us, send a message on Facebook or any of the social media stuff. Um or email and uh, email info at edgeofempire.co.uk. Don't email the Russia Edge of Empire. Okay. A lot of people email. I wonder if it's on the website still. Better check. Um, okay, if you do want to help out the show, we've got some various affiliate links. So this is where we go begging for you to like us. Um, so affiliate link with Audible, that's a great service, $7.99 a month. 
you get an audio book with that um and they're much cheaper than buying them from black library directly i think um what was it end in the death was 30 quid on black library to get the mp mp3 book you can get it off audible download it to your computer and it's much much cheaper um and it's a great service it's a great great little service uh, i love it i'm a big fan of it um we've also got uh uh, affiliate links with Element Games, uh, my one of my favorite gaming stores, and one of the things that I think is under under we under sort of cook is the. I mean, obviously, if you go for the link on our website, you know we get a little kickback. Brilliant. One of the things that we've kind of ne- oh, we always undersell this bit the crystal codes. We always mention it, but they're your loyalty points in there. So for every, I, I think it's ten pounds you you spend, you get a crystal uh co- point, uh, and those crystal points add up uh, and uh, you get money and you can get money off your order so you get your referral code and when you put it out if you put someone else's referral code in you will get double crystals now doing this i managed to build up over the past year um i i'm very bad at using them 169 crystal codes which actually is 16 pounds 90 so that's going to get me a nice little bit of money off when i buy an expansion for my solar ox hopefully uh, a tank or a las rifle section something like that but as I said, you use them. If you don't have any mates like me, um, you know, Chris and Graham basically tolerate me because I've got the, I've got the program to <laughs> make this. They're not my friends. They don't like me. Um, nobody likes me. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we have our own codes. Chris's is CHR two one one. Graham's is GRA two seven nine four. Mine is MIC four four zero. But if you've got your mates, you know, do that. It's just nice if you do it for us. You get your double crystal point, and in return. Whoever you code you use gets single crystal point. You get the crystal points that you would have normally got, which is great. Um, and we've also got an affiliate link with the outpost, uh, an FLGS in Sheffield, which is uh, uh, fairly uh, nice. And um, if you want to give to us directly, we've got Patreon, um, which I love our Patreon members. Um, we'll be putting up a thank you screen at the end of this show. Uh, they are amazing. Um, they help uh, us pay the po- the hosting fees that this podcast uh, you know takes um and um if you don't want to give a one-off we've got ko-fi which is you know on our website as well i mean i nobody i don't think anybody no we've had one or two um but it's just sort of like you make i want to make a one-off like whatever you know i'm saying oh i'm gonna send a couple of quid to michael it's great well it ends up with me and then i spend it on um you know putting on the show um but that's uh, that's basically it. So next episode is going to be a solo auxiliary episode. Now I had a little discussion yesterday about this. We're going to do everything that's in the Libra now, and then we're going to do the rest of the stuff that gets added in when we do our breakdown of uh, the um, Beta Garmon book, which will be coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, Games Workshop don't send us an advanced copy. Uh, I mean, if, if anybody from Games Workshop is uh, watching and they want to do that in future, I'll be you know, please. We, we, we. Yeah, but we need to do more. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, so that's great. Uh, and basically, thank you for thank you for tolerating us. I'm sorry for the delays. Um, we will be back in a week or two uh, with a solar auxilia episode. Um, in the meantime, um, that's pretty much what we've got. Uh, if you um, yeah, and thanks, as Chris would say, love and snuggles. <laughs>